excited to be with you for the next three hours. Erin, I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to be here with you. We uh, we have a lot to talk about. We really, really do. And I want to get into more about you and your background, but I know you want to dive right into a bunch of different issues. So, let's, so many different issues, yeah. and I'm ready to kill them all. I know. I know. I, your excitement is palpable. So let's let's add a few things we're going to talk about, and let's get right into the issues. I feel like we're lucky. Like The timing of this show and the next three hours is lucky because... We're going to talk about, now we're going to talk about the Supreme Court, without a doubt. This is, there's no reason to put on the news to find out what's happening with uh, the, the soccer players that, in <laughs> Thailand, because we'll, we'll just update people, right? Right. I think the latest is that they've gotten, what, four? Four, four out so far. The coach and the others are still in there. The coach, so we'll update people on that. There's a lot of different issues about that that I know you want to get into. Um, and then later on, we got, we got a whole bunch of things we want to get into. Um, usually, you know, you do a show like this after the, a week that has a holiday, there's like a, not a lot of things to talk about. We have way more things to talk about than time. So, Beyond. Yeah. But let's get in to the Supreme Court because I know we're going to talk about your bio later, but the short of it is you're an attorney. You yeah. were, uh, you worked with the Trump campaign. I did. I did. Right. You were on The Apprentice. I know one of the earlier seasons. Season three. Season three. Um, you were, you went pretty, you went pretty far in the show. I too. did. I, I was, uh, fired, I believe ninth, but I was one of the main rebel rousers. So I was on all, but basically two episodes cause they brought me back to help finish off the task. And I eventually brought it home for the winner. So I was a big part of the show whoa, and I loved whoa, every minute whoa, 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 whoa. of it. Hold on. Wait, they, that's very meaningful to me <laughs> from an apprentice standpoint. All right. You got. You got the, you're fired. I did. By the way, that's how bad. That's the oh, worst. Oh, when people try to treat me Trump like that's a bad thing, I use that. I, I think it's a sort of an accomplishment. I no. won the number one rated show on TV with the president of the United States. No, how bad can it of be? Of course. But what I mean is usually yes. when you're fired, now you're. Gone. Uh, yeah, you're a piece of yellow pie in Trivia Pursuit at that point. <laughs> but they brought you back? They did. They brought me back to help complete the final task for the winner of the season three of The Apprentice. And the person that I worked for was Kendra, and she won. So it must have been, they, they don't bring you back for no reason. You no. must have been popular with, they must have done some kind of testing. and uh, Q score, I think they call that, right? Or something that, like I don't that. know. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm a I radio guy. I don't know. <laughs> your Q I was, score? Your... I, I think it's likability or something like that. I was popular, and you know who else liked me? Uh, DJT, President 45. Right. He loved me, I have to say. Right. We got along really swimmingly. Well, and still obviously, do. the feeling was mutual, because you end up then working on the Trump campaign. Yeah. I did. Right, right, okay. I interviewed Ivanka as well. They're, oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, yeah. I'll tell you my Ivanka story later. Ooh. I will tell you my Ivanka story later. So, look, let's get into with your background, having gone to Villanova Law School. So yes. you went right right here in Philadelphia, uh, or in the Philadelphia That's area. how I got to Philadelphia, by the way. I, I, saw, I applied to several law schools, and I said to my father, I just really want to be in a big city. My dad said, just apply to Villanova. It's near Philadelphia. I didn't even look at it. I just applied. I got in and I accepted immediately. That was 2000, the year 2000. I graduated in 2003 and I've been in Philadelphia ever since. I love this Wait, so you place. Wait, so you were in law school from 2000 to 2003. Correct. The exact same year as I was in law school. Oh my gosh, that's random. Exact same year as I was in law school. In, yeah. in Philadelphia. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know any of you fancy pen guys though. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you, 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 you guys just stop. You know. Well, it, speaking of that, it's interesting you say that because we're going to talk about the Supreme Court, yes. possi the possible Supreme Court picks. And one of the things that Trump has said was, I want someone with an Ivy League background, which I think is meaningless, right? But he said that, and people are, are re trying to read the tea leaves yes. like that actually matters. So let's get into who these nominees are. But you're worried about the Ivy League factor. Did you read the I'm article? not worried about it at all. I don't think, I don't <laughs> think, I, he, you know, he went to Warden, he's saying yes. that, but I, that's what he's saying. But what, what were you going to say? But do you know, have you, did you read the article in Politico about what they think he's looking at? Forget Ivy League. They think he's going on looks. Yeah, and so maybe he is. So is there something yeah. to that? So I think so. Politico basically said over the weekend that he wants someone out of central casting, so to speak. He picked partially Neil Gorsuch when he saw a picture of him and his wife, uh, Louise. You know, obviously, Neil Gorsuch was his last appointee to the Supreme Court. He said, wow, they just sort of look the part. So they're saying he's considering the look and feel of the family. So could that be 
a fact. Is there something to that? All right. Well, let's go through the no- let's go through the nominees. Let's do it. Who do you want uh, to start with? Well, let, well let's let, let's talk about ladies the looks. first. Well, no, well, oh, looks. Okay. But, but you said you mentioned the looks, right? I so, did. So if you go through the if you think about the looks, right, right, and you say that matters to the president, uh huh. Who who's got the look? Like, what is the look of a Supreme Court nominee well, to you? I think they all kind of everyone in contention. They all are, you know, fairly attractive people. None oh, of them, whoa, 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 hold on. I so looked at look, every one of their the pictures look to and Aaron they're all Elmore good looking. Isn't it, it's the look is attractive? It's not I, like the, I'm. It's I'm not putting, salt and pepper hair. That like, is attractive. Look like oh, oh, oh okay, okay. I thought you meant the look was like central casting, like they look like they should bang a gavel with a robe on. Oh, you're I, saying they have to be hot. <laughs> I think they have to be physically appealing. So you took it. That's so interesting. So you I took is. it. Took it as they had to look like a judge on a bench. No, 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 no. They have to look like central casting in terms of attractive. attractive. I think so. I think you, maybe you're right. We know that the president likes attractive people. He, he that he does. Yeah, that he does. So but I looked there, at all of these people, and they're all, for all intents and purposes, good-looking people. They, uh, if you look at the final four, yes, right, yes. So if you look at the final four, uh, that's probably true. Yes, right. If you look at the four, that's yes. true. Right. So uh, I mean, in terms of the central casting approach. I would say that the most, my front runner in terms of looks, qualifications, and who is most likely to get nominated, and first of all, before I tell you who it is, we know something about President Trump. From knowing him personally and from knowing him now as a president and a tweeter in chief, we know that he has all these nominees and he had all these meetings. Do you realize he could pick someone completely out of left field and have the whole world guessing? The press would be guessing. The Twitter sphere would be guessing. He could pick someone that we haven't even talked about. He, that the media hasn't even considered. Of course. And he would love, he would, I'm sure he would love to shock everybody by doing that. Truthfully. Right. I digress. Well, let me I, ask you a question first. You may. How do you counteract the criticism that if he does it all by looks, that that's just superficial? Okay. Good. Good. Well, if you want to get into all this, you, you're a data guy. When we talk, we met, you I know, am. telling everyone that's listening out there, you and I met this week and had an awesome, great conversation. And you love data. I do. And you love God science we, and it, statistics and facts I and like figures. to say, in God we trust, everyone else needs data. Ooh, I love that. That's, right. that's a cool quote. It's not me. It's not me. Someone else has said that, but I like that quote. I like it. Well, if you look at statistics and data, don't good-looking people do better in the world? I hope not too much better. Oh, stop it. You're so self-deprecating. <laughs> it's crazy. But keep, but keep going. So do looks matter is the question. And I'm going to answer that question. The ugly truth is yes. Studies show that good-looking people just do better in life. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's look at it this way. Oh. Cornell did a study, okay? For a woman, if she gains 64 pounds, her wages drop by 9%. And women that advance in the workplace are thinner, taller, and more youthful. And I hate to tell you this. You're, let me ask you this. You, you like to answer questions and be like a little yeah, teased here. Yeah. Do you think that attractive people have higher or lower IQs? Uh, I'm going to say higher IQs or you wouldn't have brought up the point. <laughs> Fair enough. According to research from the London School of Economics, attractive men have IQs that are 13.6% above average. Attractive women, 11.4% above average. So this is interesting because, so essentially your point is, Trump is, it's not that Even he, if he is doing this with looks in mind. Right, well, well, but maybe he doesn't, maybe the reason why, I, I've always said that no one ever gives his him credit for his gut. Like everyone always has this argument. Is he crazy or is he crazy like a fox, right? Like- <laughs> And, you know, like, oh, no, he's not crazy. He does all this stuff on purpose. Or maybe it's in between. Like, maybe the guy just has a gut, and that gut has served him incredibly well. That could be the case. So maybe the guy has a gut that says, look, looks really matter because his gut has really led him to think about this. these kind of data points have served him. Right. right? And so my point is, let's say that people are going to slam him and say, oh, he's potentially picking these people based on looks. My answer would be, 
be that as it may, it's serving the whole country well because these good looking people are more successful in life. And hey, they have higher IQs. So you're, be that as it may. You're killing me because I was hoping to make fun of you for <laughs> the superficial aspect of this. And you you came back with me at data. Well, my superficiality is backed up by data. Ah, so ha, right, look, ha, hardy, hardy, all right, hardy, we got to take a break. When we come back, let's start diving in to the four candidates. But anyone who wants to weigh in, let's give them a chance to do so. 855-839-1210. 855-839-1210. Do you have an issue with the president saying or this concept that, that Ariel Moore brings up of, hey, he's going by looks, looks, and, and that looks matter for success. Weigh in, 855-839-1210. We'll also start to get into the candidates. That's free game as well. Lots to talk about. Aaron L. Moore and Anthony Mazzarelli. It's Talk Radio 1210. W Last season. 10. Aaron L. Moore, Anthony Mazzarelli. Very happy to be with you. And before the break, uh, Aaron brought up an interesting point, which was, you know, Trump has said and told others that, look, he, he cares about what these people look like. And, uh, you know, it's easy to get critical of that. And then Aaron brings out the data <laughs> in which it says, look, that that matters. Whether Trump's doing that on purpose because he knows this data or that's just his gut, uh, there is something to that. So we're having that discussion and want to give chance to people a chance to weigh in. By the way, give us a call, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. In a little bit, Erin, who is an attorney, so she's got the bona fides to do it. We're going we're gonna to walk through these different nominees. I, I think it's kind of cool because tomorrow night, right, at 9 o'clock, I think he's yes, announcing. we will know. So we get to sort of prognosticate, yes. give our final picks. And here's the cool part. No one will remember if we're wrong. Right. But if we're right, we'll remind people repeatedly Constantly. how we nailed it. Right. Yeah. You know what else? I love it. This is going to be like prime time TV. Leave it to our president, the people's president, the TV president. This is going to be what people are tuning into at nine o'clock at night. Forget well, all the shows on television. They're going to be tuning in to see who he picks. Well, He's he, making it must see TV. Well, the question is, does that mean, does that, is that a clue about who it is? It's another thing to think about. We'll get to that. Uh, oh, Christine Flowers, who uh, was just here on the air a little bit earlier. Hey, Christine. Welcome, hey, welcome back. How are you? Hey, Dr. Mazel. First of all, I wanted to say how great you guys sound and how Thank thrilled you. I am to have uh, to have Aaron on the air and to have you there. So I hope Thank it's you. a regular thing because it's really, really good. Um, and I wanted to say, I, I spent an hour talking about the, um, the Supreme Court as well, but I really like the angle that you guys are going at because um, I'm not just talking about the, uh, you know, the, the, what, what a justice looks like, whether a justice is good looking or not, but I, I think this, you're on to something a little bit deeper, and that is intuition. Because if you look at some of the Supreme Court justices in the past, when they looked at just their record, Justice Souter, uh, Justice Warren, uh, they were, they, they went exactly in the opposite direction that the president that appointed them wanted them to go, and that's because I think they were looked at based on their resumes alone. And I don't think that president uh, in the piece of the puzzle. And when you just look at someone on a piece of paper, it doesn't truly show you who they are. So getting a feel for their family, like they said Trump was saying and doing, getting a feel for who they are, I think is a better indication of what kind of justice they're going to be. I think you're completely right. Hey, Christine, do you want to give your uh, your your prognostication? That is not the Aaron Elmore pick. I'll just uh, it won't I'll, be my pick. I'll give you the spoil alert up front. Of who I think is going to. And, all right, so let's talk. Let's let's start with her. Okay, all right, let's so do let, it. Let's start with why we would think when you start to go through the candidates, uh, the sort of pros and cons of Amy Coney Barrett, right? Yeah. So why do you think um, she? You know, the pros obviously. She is going to be someone who is going to fly the conservative flag. Yeah, she's great for the base. She's going to get Trump brownie points with the base, but. The one thing that Christine just said, our caller that called in, I don't like that we're picking someone just because they're a woman. That's why a lot of people voted for Hillary Clinton. Oh, I want to, a woman fair, president. No, to, no, no. To be I don't fair, want... Christine said that she normally would, would never like true. to say that's why she that wanted to pick. Right? And Christine's amazing. Yeah. But I think that, you know, when people would say to me, I want a woman president, so I'm voting for Hillary. I say, I want a woman president too, but she's not the right woman for the job. And I kind of feel that way about Ann Coney Barrett. I don't think... One of the, you talked about the pro, that the base will love her. She's Catholic. She's devout. She's anti-abortion. But there's a lot of cons that come along with her. She's only spent one year on the bench. Her accomplishments are... Oh, so you're going to put that... You put that as a con. Humongous. 
That's job experience. She's got no job experience. I mean, she's got no accomplishments. They're really, really sparse. Um, and, you know, she's a device of choice. And to get a device of choice through when we've got this narrow margin of 51 to 49 in the Senate, I don't, I don't think she'll get through. So she's I, a bad pick. So, so should, and for those reasons, you're saying she's a bad pick. I, yes. Uh, she, something positive about her. She was a, a law clerk for Scalia. Um, positive, you know, should be the fourth female on the Supreme Court. She would be the youngest. Those are all sort of weighing in her favor. Weighing in her favor. See, I think a couple of things you mentioned are in her favor. Okay. I think the fact that she would be a giant fight is a reason that Trump might pick her. He loves that. I know, but he also loves to win, and we know that he says that. Go day win. All these people will winning get is getting her through. I All these people so. will get through. The, I, the, 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 the liberals are banging their fist and doing their fear mongering about the abortion yeah, thing. But the here's the thing. thing that we know in the, settled. Sen- in the Senate chamber, no matter how hard you bang your fist, you only get one vote. Yeah, but the margin is narrow, so that means we need all of the Republicans to cooperate, yeah. and they might not. This is a midterm election we're facing so the, who, in November. So who is, yeah, but that's why, look, the thing you get with her is you actually get the vote of Joe Donald, the, the Democratic senator from uh, Indiana probably has to vote for her. That's true. He voted for Neil Gorsuch, so I think, but here's why I think he won't pick her. I think he won't pick her for a couple reasons. One reason why is that the issue with her is that she is so conservative on the abortion issue and that she has signaled that she might actually find a right to abortion, a right to live in the Constitution, right. which would not kick this back to the states. Correct. That is, that's almost an activist sort of position that I think that when someone sort of explains that, that's like, I, I, to I me, that's going to, the people around Trump are going to be like, yo, too scary, too much. Yeah, I think that's going to be a little too far. Now, for people who are very, you know, who are going to say they're pro-life, they're going to they're going to like that. It, but they're not the majority here. We, we, I agree. Well, another thing is, is you know, what we think put her on the map. Feinstein. That is right. You took the words out of my mouth. She had a huge fight during her confirmation with Diane Feinstein, and that is why she is in the position that yes, she is in today. Yes. Thank you, Democrats. You did it again. She's only here because of the Feinstein thing. When she, was, when she was being put up for the Federal Court of Appeals, the Federal Appeals Court, she's o- the only reason why we even know her name. That's right. It's Feinstein. because Feinstein went after her religion. She accused her of not being able to make an unbiased, if you will, decision because of her strong religious views. Yeah, this is and they the, had a huge fight. Yes. That's the, pro- the problem nowadays is that the moment one side gets too extreme about punching the other, right. they actually create heroes and demigods, a- right? Example. And this with is With MS-13. Yes. We got yeah. the Democrats to say, well, these are animals. These aren't animals. They're people. You're like, uh, no, they're rapists and killers, but thank you. No, this is the, the she might as well just be called the Feinstein Candidate nominee. Choice. Yes. Agreed. Right? So this is the Feinstein nominee. And the question is, will Diane Feinstein's nominee get on get on the Supreme Court bench? And the, the way to do that would be for these Democrats to start getting more and more, uh, getting their panties in a bunch, if you right. will, That's right. about this candidate. Yeah. And if they do, Trump will be like, forget it. My I'm guess, picking her just to spite you. And I'm, we're going to get her in. And he will if that happens. I completely agree. But if they can keep it together, it won't happen. I will tell you, I think between now and tomorrow at 9 o'clock, she is not on the list. I also have heard it didn't go well when he interviewed her. Right. She could immediately be put back on the list if it, Feinstein keeps dancing the way she did before. Or maybe if Pelosi or Cry and Chuck Schumer do something crazy, she'll get back no, on the top of the list. I totally agree. And I know you know you're also a movie buff. Uh, I not so much. But she's involved in a group called the People of Praise group. Some people say that's cultish. It's a religious organization. And the movie The Handmaid's Tale, wasn't that up for an Oscar this year? Uh, well, it was a Netflix. Oh, a show. Okay. So so see, it, this it, is how little Emmy, I know won, about it. It won Emmys. In fact, I think and Elizabeth Moss winning. may have won an Emmy. So that's what... Netflix. Yeah, it was Nef- it was it Netflix or no? Actually, it wasn't Netflix. It was I believe it was Hulu. Am I Hulu. right? Hulu. Yeah, it was Hulu. Okay, so Thank not you, a movie. Dan. I stand corrected. Thank you, Dan. I apologize. Not a big cinephile, if you will. <laughs> that's right. um, but this uh, that's what the Handmaid's Tale is about. This culty like group. Also, am I a cinephile? That's, that sounds like is a, that bad, a real thing. That's probably a real thing. It is a thing. I think it's something to be proud of, if anything. Yeah, although <laughs> people who won't know that word, that sounds like a really bad thing. <laughs> well, the word, <laughs> that, guy, true. That, guy, that guy's a cinephile. Like Did you hear he's a cinephile? <laughs> I get where you're going with this one. <laughs> but you are. Uh, you like you I love am your a, movies. I'm a cinephile. I'm a cinephile. I'm not. 
Hey, my, my name is Anthony Mazzarelli, and I'm a cinephile. Um, <laughs> but but go ahead. It, it, I think that her being a part of this group, you know, people are thinking that's a little wacky. So another con on the side of her. But I think if Democrats behave themselves for the next 18 hours, she's not on the top she of might the list. Just, I'm just going to call her Justice Feinstein. So yes. Justice Feinstein is off the list unless the Democrats make a big deal. Correct. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we got the other candidates to go through. Because you and I are both saying she's probably not going to get on. Right. Unless... The Democrats make a huge deal over, over the next 24 hours. Oh, yeah, this is this is a good song. I'm not a good My singer. daughter likes this video. This is the video with the tattoo. I again, I don't know what the video is. Tattoo. Are. Yeah, trust me on this. Because this this <laughs> video is a, it's a mom and a daughter, and and then the, they have a she has a tattoo, and she's in a town where no one else has the tattoo, and they all think she's weird, and then she goes to another town, and there's everyone has the tattoo. Everyone has a tattoo. Kind of like a Fact, concentration camp. Dan is Dan is not. He's doing it all tonight. He's and including fact checking. The tattoo. All right. That will be the official brand of the show tonight. Will be the tattoo. I'm anti tattoo though. I, I have no. I have no tattoos. Yeah, no. I can see that one tattoo from here that you have. I have zero tattoos. <laughs> I might have some dirt on my it's, face. It's radio, so I could. No one oh, will yes. know whether. You watch Glee. No. No. Okay, because it wasn't Glee. But I'm no, not seeing but any Glee kind of movie does that, that, that it was in. All right, not movie. It's the video that I was video. Okay, I'll check that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Check. It's all about the tattoo. The suspense is killing me. Yeah, but it's not really. It, I, I think it's not supposed to be a tattoo. It's supposed to be like a almost like a birthmark kind of thing that oh, everybody has. Oh, all right, okay. I don't know. It's deeper, deeper meaning. But anyway, anyway, it's there are more Anthony Mazzarelli. We're we're running through these candidates because we get a chance to uh, to sort of guess who Trump is going to pick President Trump for tomorrow night and. We uh, we went through. We, we started with um, Ann Cardi Barrett. Ann Cardi Barrett. Where we both think he's not going to choose her. We went through unless the, the Democrats why. act up. Yeah, and then she's which she's the one they're most likely to act up about. Correct. Um, and I call her the Feinstein nominee mm-hmm. because they created her. They if she didn't ask all those questions about her religion, which there's not supposed to be a religious test for these positions, she wouldn't even be in the mix right now. I agree. Um, Next one to talk about, I think, would be Brett Kavanaugh. Let's do it. I think he's the front runner, in my personal opinion. Okay. Um, and if we go back to what we were talking about earlier, that the president is, you know, wants to see the look and feel of the family and the candidate, and he really liked the way that Nil and Louise Gorsuch, Gorsuch looked. Brett and Ashley Kavanaugh kind of have that look too. They're a good looking family, but he's just a solid candidate. Twelve years on the bench, DC, Yale Law School, Anthony Kennedy's law clerk. The pro about him is his view of presidential power. You know what I know what it is? You're going to love this one. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Go ahead and say it. The president doesn't have to respond to criminal charges while in office. That goes along with President Trump saying everything's a witch hunt. So that's something that's huge with DJT. He yeah. loves that the president is not really going to be having to respond to any criminal charges while in office. What president wouldn't like that? But, you know, Trump in particular with calling everything like, a witch hunt and fake news. Yeah, but it's like they're an, all to get me. It's and, like buying an insurance plan, though, if you're an president, if you're a president. <laughs> Basically, I, I mean, it, it truly is. Um, it, it, that way, the president won't be distracted, use the impeachment process instead. And that all that personally makes sense to me. I get it. Um, so once you impeach said president, you could then do the criminal charges. But that's why I think he's a, a shoe in. That's a huge one. But right. there's- he's also the favorite of uh, Donald McGahn, who's the guy running this election process. Uh-huh. So all things make him a possible, you know, make him a front runner. There's some cons, though. Well, there's one big con. Go ahead. Give me your con. And it starts with, uh, I'll give you the two numbers, 43. He's got huge ties to Bush 43. And we know uh, that's see that feels like fake news. It's real news. So no, Bush no, no. For, no he's uh, really tied to forty three. Yes, but yes, this idea that Trump would be like, oh, he's too close with with you know. I see what you're saying. With Bush, and like that's like I feel like that's the thing where they they try to make up these rivalries sometimes that aren't really real. Right, but uh, you know, Bush forty three held a private swearing in party for him at the White House in the Rose Garden, and we know recently Bush just you know kind of came out against the thousand points of light and. But do you think that Trump volunteerism? Really, so, I mean, so who, Trump, why criticize on, that? So on one hand, Trump has a guy who says that the president in office shouldn't have to deal with investigations and criminal actions against him, mm-hmm. and on the other hand, he's boys with a former president that he maybe doesn't like. You, like, is that really a balancing test that Trump's going to have trouble balancing? I think he could overlook it, but if we're going to look in the totality of the candidate, 
I think it's something to take into account. So I think it's bigger cons. What's right? the bigger con? What do you think? So I, I think the bigger cons are one that Rand Paul has already signaled he has issues with the guy, and Rand Paul is, is a vociferous kind of guy. He speaks out a lot. Yeah, and so if Rand and he's smart and he t- he tries to be uber consistent, he does. Anybody who has that libertarian streak, like that's like their thing. So he's gonna. It's gonna be hard for him to pull that back if that's true. And two, the dude's a snore fest. <laughs> Snoo city, right? And that's not tr- like. I mean, are any of these guys lighting the world on fire with their uh, sassy behavior? Right. I don't think so. Right. So if if there's no, if they're all vanilla, yes, right, then I think he's going to end up going with the one that knows his sister. Okay, so that is Thomas Hardman. Yeah. By the way, he's got chambers in Pittsburgh on the, across the state where I grew up. I like that about him. There you see. So that's why I think he served on the Third Circuit with DJT's sister. There you go. See, see what I'm saying? Like, if they're all a snooze fest, you know that they're all okay from the Federal Society because he probably just right. got a list. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so if they're all a snooze fest and he's like, ugh, yeah. he can't go with the with the woman who was on the list because of all the things we talked about. Right. And he apparently didn't go well when he met with her. No. So now he's like, all right, listen, all this is boring. I'm not going to be able to do anything great with this. They're all pretty good. Like you said, they're all pretty good looking. Yes. Then, you know, sis, sis said this one's pretty good. And you know what else president likes about him? Uh, the word on the street is that he loves his personal story and finds it compelling. So Thomas Hardiman was the first in his family to graduate college, and he helped pay for his education by driving a taxi. Love it. Trump loves a story like that. Didn't you have to drive a taxi in your season of The Apprentice? One of the seasons they had to do that. Uh, no, but uh, thank God I didn't. <laughs> Um, my my husband There's calls me ta- um, uh, from the Flintstones. Remember that show? Yeah. He calls me Goggles Paisano. Wait, th- that's a person from the Flintstones? I think so. He, I, I hope he's listening. I'll have to ask him on the break. But I think there was Dan, some... Dan will fact check. Go- whether- Goggles Paisano. That means like the guy... I don't know. Like just basically you're driving. <laughs> I'm a bad in driver. The, in the Flintstones... I run out of gas. I told Flint- you it was like It was like Bam Bam and Fred. This and then like there's Goggles of, Paisano. This was just on one episode. <laughs> Let's not digress, okay? I, so I, I shouldn't be driving a taxi. I probably shouldn't be driving anything without 100 airbags. <laughs> Or wrapped in bubble wrap. At any rate, he drove. Some goggles Paisano and uh, Flintstones. Flintstones. What did he do? What was Goggles Paisano known for? Being a bad driver or something? Yeah. I, I'm just impressed that you that you pulled out. I'm good at Jeopardy's type stuff. That's a good one. Yeah, but at any rate, his story is compelling. Uh, Thomas Hardiman drove a taxi yeah. to pay for his college, and he's also pro Second Amendment. Uh, look, I, so, I think this, and he knows the sister. He knows the sister, and Trump loves family. We know that. Yeah. So he trusts his sister. You know what? I might be swaying. Have I, sway- have I got a you a little bit. I got you on this. But we're, but we're not. Wait, we're not putting on our bets yet. Okay, but I could see where you're. I, if nothing else, I can see where you're coming from. And of all of these nominees or you know candidates, rather, um, he's the longest serving on the bench. So yeah, he went to Georgetown Law. That's not exactly Yale. By, if it's a stereotype. But, but by the way, though, think of what Christine Flowers said. This guy went to Notre Dame and then Georgetown. Wait, yeah, yeah, true, true. So, yes, he doesn't have the Ivy League pedigree that Trump likes. Georgetown's pretty good. Yeah. So I mean, it's not Dame. Ivy League, but it's like top, what, five, so six, seven, eight law Dame. schools in the country. So Notre Dame. Great schools, both great schools. Um, so I, I, so what look, are the cons about him? I don't really, like, what, what I haven't heard really, actually, you know what? I'm swaying myself as we converse because what are the cons on this guy? The con is the sister thing he'll catch flack on. The other con is that um, it's, he's probably not being, you know, he's not getting whispers from everyone around him, but it, they're, they're on the list, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if he, you know, he, we haven't really talked about this, but I think that there's everybody, everybody thinks about conservative versus liberal when it comes to the courts. Sure. But that's not how they really cut. They're really about how they interpret the Constitution. Uh, uh, yeah. Right? And so everybody tries to squeeze that into conservative liberal box. Right. right? Right. And that's where you end up getting into trouble. And they end up choosing these guys, and then they end up interpreting the Constitution differently. And then we look through the lens of conservative liberal. If you actually look at how they end up interpreting things, I mean, look at Scalia and where he is with the police and investigations, you'd say, I, I don't understand. My head just exploded on conservative liberal. Right. It's how they view the Constitution. Constitution. Right. And so I don't know all these articles that are written 
that are sort of synopsis of how these guys, their records are. These reporters, they don't, they don't, they're not lawyers, so they don't, they don't go into enough detail in this stuff. And so I don't know if there's a con in there that the team that is around Trump is looking at that we don't know. Right. But see what I'm saying? When you hear the fodder on the shows and in the paper and what you read online, they can't really point to anything too negative about him. So that could get him bumped up into that position. This is my this is my sleeper pick. Now listen, the Vegas odds, which by the way, I bet you at the break, we'll look. There is probably an online betting website. Let's bet. Well, I also think that those sites tend to do well, right? It's sort of the wisdom of the crowd, right? I'll bet you he is not the front runner. He's probably not even number two or number three. He's probably in the fourth position, maybe mm-hmm. even fifth. I, th- but I think this, this is my long shot pick. This is the guy. I'm, this is the pick where if I'm wrong, no one remembers Maz was wrong. But if right. I'm right, I'm Dan. I'm gonna have Dan pull that sound bite and play it every time I film it. <laughs> But I, I do like that about him, that he doesn't have the cons, and he's kind of that sleeper. Yeah. No one can really object to him that much. You can't really object to him. You well, can't I guess really if, if we're uh, using the word liberal over here, the Second Amendment, we could sort of extract something negative or extrapolate there somehow, some way. But as it stands right now, he's pretty solid. I, I agree. Also solid, though? What do you think about Raymond Kethledge? So he, to me, here, here's what I think about Raymond Kethledge, and, and we'll take a break. Here's what I think about Raymond Kethledge. The more we talk about these guys, I'll forget whether we're talking about Kavanaugh or Kethledge. So it's like... Ugh, they blend together a They blend bit. together a little bit. And yeah. that's unfair because these guys have incredible track records, and right. that's kind of unfair to do. But we're talking about a president where these things kind of matter. So, you know, but let's look. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk a little more about this. If you want to weigh in... Now's your chance to do so. 855-839-1210. 855-839-1210. We laid out and we mentioned all the front runners. We'll go in. Let's hear it. There's a really bad Indy 500 driver. Ah. Uh, Fred Flintstone's alter ego when he drove in the race. And uh, he drives real fast, obviously. So that's probably why your goggles uh, Paisano. So it's Fred Flintstone is goggles okay. Paisano. Well, that, and in my house, in the Elmore Spitzer household, I am goggles paisano i have a terrible driver according to my husband i love that all right goggles good, good so nickname. it is a good nickname I'll all take right it. so it's goggles paisano anthony mazzarelli <laughs> um aaron elmore anthony mazzarelli here on talk radio 1210 we're talking about the uh who the president's going to pick and interestingly dan who is the uh, also the research department tonight um not only in by the way in how long was that break two minutes in two minutes he not only pulled up the Goggles Paisano uh, feature there, but he also got us the um, the updated offshore odds from Bovado on the different picks. Okay. And Hardiman isn't even in the Bovado pick, but uh, a couple other people are. But you wanted to bring up a sleeper pick that also is not in the odds here. Yes. Senator Mike Lee, Republican from Utah. Really? Here's why. Okay. Ted Cruz calls him a surefire conservative who's liked by both Democrats and Republicans. He has served in all three branches of government. And the thing about him, he was, look, he was a law clerk to two federal judges, including Alito, who's now on the Supreme Court, federal prosecutor and general counsel for the governor of Utah, and a senator for a decade. So people know him. People like him. He's liked across the aisle. They could probably get him through. Another dark horse. But I know he met with him, but people are saying he ju- Trump just met with him as a courtesy to Ted Cruz. Yeah, the, but it could work. But here's the problem, That's a strategy right? that could work. Here's the con. Even in your description, he becomes Cruz's guy. Mm-hmm. Trump's not going to give Cruz a Supreme Court pick. That's true. Right? If Cruz would have backdoored it in some way, maybe. Yeah. But this is it's, he's just got Cruz stamped all, all over, over him. him. I think that's a problem. I, I couldn't agree with you more because we know they have a very, very, very contentious but Cruz history. just. But I'll tell you what Cruz did is he just had us, he had it be known that he has the ability to make Trump consider his guy as a Supreme Court nominee. Cruz has already won. Well, in his mind, but maybe that's why President Trump did it. He said, okay, Lion Ted, here you go. I'm going to. So who of- else? Who else did that? Of, all, of anybody else in the country, do you have anybody else that was able to get Trump to meet? Maybe it happened in private. Yes, but, of course. But that's how, so Cruz wins. 
There's a win. That, yeah, he can pull it's a PR up. win right there. He's had a couple of wins lately. Did you see him play basketball with uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel? Kimmel? I did. <laughs> he beat him. In, I love that story, by the way. But that's a whole digression. I, I love that he beat his butt in basketball. He had no, I mean, Kimmel had no chance of winning. Cruz played basketball. Well, that's like Kimmel's fault. Well, that's yeah, Kimmel's of course. Fault. Did we finish our conversation though, about Raymond Kethledge? Well, we have. Oh, no. So, so Kethledge, what do you think the... Uh, the pluses and minuses about Kethledge are? Uh, ten years on the bench in the Sixth Circuit. Kennedy Law Clerk. All I good. See, Kennedy Law Clerk cuts which way? Well, I think that's good. Really? Because Kennedy is kind of what the conservatives in the base would not want. True, but so was Brett Kavanaugh. He was also Kennedy Law Clerk. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it's so true. that could cut both ways. He's got some famous... I, still, I think there's a Finkel-Einhorn issue with Kennedy and, <laughs> with Kavanaugh and Kethledge. Like, they're... They're, they're again. I don't mean to belittle either of their careers. They're both not. amazing jurists, but to the to the public, and this is the kind of stuff that matters to Trump. They're, they're like they're too close together. Yeah, he wants a bang. He wants a bang at nine o'clock tomorrow. Although, obviously, I'm saying that both of those dudes are front runners. Right. It's probably going to be one of those two. But go ahead, keep going. Um, he's had some notable cases. He ruled against the EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission on credit checks and anti-union ruling on dues. But he also had a ruling uh, that he said that police don't need a warrant to look at records and the Supreme Court overturned that. So that could be a little bit of a con, don't you think? Yeah. Well, depends which way you want to think about that. But yeah. So um, that's him in a nutshell. He's essentially, he's got a shorter record, which is what... 10 you, years on the bench, though. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, true. But it... Sorry. I think you're. I think what, what you're saying without saying is that he's milk toast to you. Yeah, I guess I'm putting. I am putting too much emphasis that Trump doesn't like that. He needs someone with a little fire. Yeah, but he he doesn't. He's going to probably choose one of these. We know these are the four finalists. But like you said, he could always do something different. Yeah, I just really, I, I truly think he could come out with something that we haven't even thought of. Well, this guy Amal Thapper. Okay, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, is someone that, you know, he'd be the first Asian American to ever be, he's, he's Indian. He's Indian, okay, um, so he's Asian, but yes, of yeah, course, from India. He, he would be, um, he's Indian American, I don't think he's actually from India. Okay. Um, he's the son of Indian American immigrants. He would, uh, he's also got, uh, he's got some long odds on the Bovado website. Okay. Um, he is someone that would make a splash, right? Um, and he supposedly is McConnell's favorite. Ooh. And McConnell's been pushing away from the guys with longer records on the court. So that is some that is some food for thought. Yeah. See, so I like that idea um, because these websites still have Barrett towards the top, which oh, I think bad idea. I think that's a you bad can't idea. get her through. What I like about this uh, pronouncing his name wrong, the Indian American gentleman, yeah. is that he will make history as appointing the first Indian American Supreme Court justice. So that will put Donald Trump in the history books yet again. All right, so you want to go with him over Hargan? I'm still going to stick with my gut. My first instinct is Brett Kavanaugh. Now, I'm going to go. That was my first sentence. You're playing it safe. You, well, you swayed me almost to Hardeman. All right. I'm going to go Brett Goggles Kavanaugh. Elmore Goggles, playing it safe. Goggles is going Kavanaugh. <laughs> All right. Aaron Elmore, Anthony Mazzarelli. What's your pick? You don't have to we'll sell be us? Back. I'm going with Hardeman. All right. I'm stick, I'm sticking with it. All right. And then Thapper's my second choice, so I'll still celebrate if I win. <laughs> it's Elmore Mazzarelli. It's Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Elmore and Anthony Mazzarelli. Here on Talk Radio 1210, we're very excited to be with you. Lots more to talk about tonight, but we have to switch gears to, I think it's the story that the world is looking at. Well, I think a lot of people here, particularly, you know, the politically minded are, are thinking about what, what uh, the president's going to do with the Supreme Court, which we talked about last hour. I think the world's looking at what's happening in Thailand with this soccer team. Right. I mean, everyone is riveted by this story. Are more people in the United States looking at the Thai, Thai soccer team or the actual World Cup? Well, look at it this way. <laughs> they're, they're slightly tied together <laughs> right, because right. these are young boys that are soccer players as well, right? That's what I'm saying. And the way that we're, we're sort of showing our support and love and sending it out to these boys in the cave and the statement sort of that I gathered from it is everyone in the world is cheering for the same soccer team today. No, that's and it's true. for those Thai boys, right? I, there is a lot of people. Sort and there's of, camaraderie. There is. There are 50 Thai divers and 40 divers from around the world. Yeah, we've got USA, United Kingdom, Australia, China, Thailand. We have people from all over the world. Instead of fighting and being divisive about politics, they're coming together for a cause and have, showing unity and 
a kindred spirit. And in the world that we live in, it's just so nice to see that. We're not talking about tariffs or sort of any vitriol. It's, true. There, it's just There is a, a sort of a, a unification around this. So if people don't know what we're talking about, it's the... Um, there are thir- there are twelve uh, a youth soccer team of twelve ages eleven through sixteen, and their twenty five year old coach are two over two and a half miles down inside these caves in Thailand. They were there for uh, some kind of soccer tournament. Um, they had had a, a game. Then they rode. Some of them rode bikes. They go to this cave. They go in the cave. I believe from some accounts they kind of went past the normal area where you would I guess cave dwell. This is not my thing. Spielung, this perhaps? Is, this is not my thing. Um, so they crossed over the barrier from where they were, you know, do not go beyond this point. They went past that point. Right. Like swimming where they have the rope in the ocean, don't swim further than this. Yeah, they were like miles past that. You said it was two and a half miles? They're, two and a half, they're over two and a half miles from the entrance. Oh, my. I mean, that's pretty far, I, right? I mean, two and a half miles. Imagine running two and a half miles. No, it's far. After a soccer game, I wouldn't walk two miles in an open prairie let alone go into a cave Forget even at that, that age i mean two miles on a treadmill is 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 really difficult yeah so um i also find it i don't know i have some questions luckily they're all alive right now thank um, goodness four of them have been rescued so that's the big update so far four of them have been rescued which by the way happened three hours before anyone even predicted it would happen um they're gonna they, they took a pause there's some rain now in a few hours they will start again um, and then the four, so four have been rescued. They're all in hospitals now. And there has been one death already, but not of any of the boys or the coach. It was in one of the Navy SEALs who was placing the oxygen tanks along the route. So right. he said, well, wait, what happened? Well, apparently the route was dry when they went down. Rains came and now certain aspects of this, this cave, which can be at some parts is, is only basically slightly wider than a person. Wow. It gets fills with water. And now in order to go back, you have to you have to go underwater for for longer than you could hold your breath. So you need oxygen to go underwater. And now the area you're in is sealed off and is losing oxygen. Right. So they've been there for a week and a day, right? Or two was, weeks. I and thought a it was day. twelve or close to yeah, tw- twelve days. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, twelve days. So now the whole world has their eyes on this place, and a lot of interesting things have happened. One is the coach has written an apology letter. Right. They've been able to get food and things down to these guys. They're getting them oxygen. They did get them. The One of the fears down there is infection. And because of, you know, they're in the cave and with the water, they are getting scratches and scrapes, which lead to infection. As a doctor, you know better than I. But they got them some iodine to put on those so to try to avoid infection because if you get an infection, you're at risk of fever, injury, death, right? Yeah. So they have some medicine down there. They have oxygen. They got some food, blankets, things like that. And I know you sort of say to yourself, well, wait a minute. If they can get all this stuff down to them, why can't they get them out? Well, because they can get things to them, but in order for them to make the trip, these are experienced divers. divers. And it's hard for even them, right? Yeah, one of them died. Because the, and the gentleman that died, Simon Kunan, I believe, I'm sure I'm butchering his name, and I apologize I for that. I can't believe you even went. I'm impressed you even went for it. Tried, right? You're trying to honor him because he, he I am. Yeah. He was a 30-year-old gentleman who was very physically fit from all accounts. So yeah, He's a Thai for, Navy SEAL. Thai Navy SEAL. So for him to have uh, you know, met this untimely peril shows that this is a very, very right. so now the, dangerous situation. So the, now they have to get them out. So this raises a whole bunch of issues. Yes. First, the coach apologizes. The coach feels awful. I have to tell you, like, if this was my child, right? I just shudder at the fact that who is leading my. I, I know we're supposed to focus on the kids, but my mind goes to why are they two and a half miles and down? I obviously the focus is on them. We all want this good ending. How does this happen? I guess because I'm not an outdoors person, maybe maybe caving or whatever. There's probably some cool term for this. I mean, I spelunking is the word to do when you no, go in a cave. spelunking the, the weird rope thing? Uh, hello, I don't know. We're in our research, research department. department. <laughs> research tech support. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, a spelunker is like a cave diver, I think. I Am I crazy? Spelunking Damn. is the... Caving, also traditionally known as spelunking. Bam! Good job. 
Good job. Good job. I'm goggles. laying down the knowledge on the doctor. Go- goggles, this Felina. Guy, what is it? Goggles, Felina. Something goggles, like that. Poisana. This goggles guy. You have more Poisano. degrees than you know. But you you know them, all the smart stuff. I know all the silly stuff. No, that's a good one. Um, Spelunking. Now you know. Now I, you can go in Jeopardy with I, me. I knew it had a good. It had some kind of like but, cooler name than caving. <laughs> well, Spelunking. <laughs> right. But now we know. But at any rate, you're saying that this. Who is this coach? And and you'd be you'd be super angry if at this coach for putting your guess, kid in this peril I, yeah you're not two wrong. and a half miles down first of all i'd my my, my, my 11 year old wouldn't be on a team with a 16 year old traveling to thailand well it's different over that's there, a I whole think, maybe, separate know. issue never heard of a soccer team that had a five-year spread on it at that age so no. there's all kinds of unanswered questions but let's focus on the kids and their safety well yes 855-839-1210 855-839-1210 the, the issue Dave and Sound and on dry land. And his parents have had a moment to decompress and think this through. I think the anger is going to set in and this is going to be very bad. Yeah, but no one's going to want to talk about it anymore. So our only shot to well, do we're it not is gonna, no, no, The media isn't going to talk about it, but these parents done. Don't, yeah. are going to be so angry they're going to be seeing red. But or one, are they so nervous that it's all is forgiven? I, re- I remember growing up. I actually was soccer. I was playing soccer. A bunch of us were at a tournament where the parents all stayed in one place in a hotel. We stayed with a bunch of other people, with a bunch of the kids. Uh, you know, we, were, we were in high school at this point. Right. So we were driving. And uh, three of us slept through our alarm. And we missed the first game. Oh, man. And this is pre-cell phone time, right? And we missed the game. And there's no cell phones. And because we stayed up really late, we weren't sure doing did. we weren't doing anything Boy stuff, nefarious. Stuff. No, we were just up hanging out. We're just down the down the Jersey Shore. And when we showed up, we didn't get in trouble at all. You know why? Why? Because people were just happy we were alive. Okay. But we never got to the anger stage. Like, is that what's going to happen to this pair? To this like coach? No, no one's going to be mad because they're just happy. But that we were the kids, though. That's the difference. I think it's going to be a mixed bag. Some of the parents are going to say, all is forgotten, all is forgiven. And some parents are going to say, wow, you're so irresponsible. But of that irresponsibility, do you know how old this coach is? 25. So do you know what a 25, I still will call that a boy. You know that you're, again, with the data and the doctors and the knowledge that you have. Do they or do they not say that a man's frontal lobe, the part of his brain responsible for reasoning and things like that, isn't developed until a man's in his 30s. It doesn't 30s. matter. You, you put these kids I know. in but his my responsibility. Point is, I, think, I think that that's the biggest mistake, is letting a 25-year-old boy... 25-year-old boy shouldn't be doing anything, really. Your frontal lobe isn't even fully developed until you're in your know. 30s as a man. No one should ever do anything called spelunking. <laughs> that's just... I don't... It's just never. That should not be... Let's show some deference Unless you do it in the privacy... You should only ever do it in the privacy of your own home. Bathtub. That's the, the, yeah, in your correct. bathtub. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, a couple other aspects of this, which is also... There's a whole bunch of issues around that you have to talk about, which you brought up something about the analogy of the coal miners, which that well, story that came up before... Well, the reason think, why is... Well... Let's see, let's take this a little Hollywood. Let's just leave it. In all there. right, we'll take it. We'll do all, all those aspects of it. And we'll give you an update too. We'll check the latest to see if any if there's been any more news on these uh, on the on the soccer players and their coach. Imagine what it's like. You got to remember, they go down this. They're two and a half miles down. There's no light. No. I mean, I guess they've passed them light now. But for those first nine days, there's there's no light. You're in total darkness and murky water. In yeah. monsoon season, which is heavy downpours, which create more and more flooding by the minute. They're licking the walls to get moisture. It's crazy. Right? No oxygen. No food. It's cold. It's wet. It's dark. They have injuries. They're scared. They're young. This brutal. has to be a brutal situation. Brutal. That's why the more you talk about it, the more you're like, why, why? The, t- the 25-year-old coach? You're giving him a pass, though. I'm not get, well, well. I'm certainly not giving a pass. I'm saying he's 25 years old. That's a child to me. Right. So you've never had a babysitter for your five year old. I have. Royce has never. It's, had. it's a woman, and I trust her. It's a she's she's in her 20s, but she doesn't sound like she's very similar. Whoa, to whoa, the, whoa, 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 whoa! Back it up. What do you the sound of the truck backing up? Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Beep. So it's a woman, meaning you would never let a man babysit your. I do not have a manny. No. No, but like not even babysit ever? Uh, 
Well, I mean, there's probably an account. Well, a friend we'll, of mine we'll babysat. This. We'll, we'll do, do another day. We'll do this one another day. A friend day. of mine babysat for, he's a single guy in his early 30s, and he babysat for a friend of mine's two kids. It was adorable. Yeah, but not your kid. I would have. We, we were otherwise encumbered. Okay. But but that's the whole thing. This guy This guy was, he's the there's coach. All right. Anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> Brutal conditions. Horrible. Right? I feel terrible for these children. And you said it reminded you of the minors. Well, it reminded me of the Chilean miner situation. They were in a very similar situation. They were. It, it, the mine it collapsed. But the right? miners, that's their job. Like, they knew they were putting themselves in harm's way, at least. Sure. But, there were, I mean, listen, I'm not trying to make an exact apples to apples comparison. Right, right, right. I'm saying two things stink a lot. Right. And uh, neither are good situations. This thing's going Hollywood. Uh, well, y- well, the other situation that went Hollywood like this, if you remember... A similar analogy. Soccer team, they got, they were in an airplane crash in the Andes Mountains. Oh, yeah. The movie was called Alive. I yeah. think the book was called Alive. I just remember the cannibalism in that movie. There was, I read the book. There was cannibalism, but that was made into a movie and a book and best selling at that. So do we think this is going to go Hollywood? Yes. Oh, yeah. Here's how this goes, Hollywood wise. If they all live, it's big budget and the star of the movie is a male. A, ma- a strong male lead. Who's it going to be to play the 25-year-old coach? Um, On the spot, sorry. Oh, that'll be like uh, like a McLovin character. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'll be like a... Uh, like <laughs> McLovin, like from that movie? Yeah. yeah okay. from I didn't like see Super it. Th- I, saw, I saw it more as like a... I don't know. Someone hall- At the end of the day, they're going to turn this guy into a hero Oh, somehow. no, 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 no. You think the, he's going to be vilified na- or like, yeah, the, the, like the slapstick guy? No, the Thai Navy SEALs will be the heroes. Okay. It'll be the rock... Will Ooh, be like, I was thinking like a Mark Wahlberg or Mark Wahlberg. Those will be the the male lead will be the who carry the movie a Navy SEAL lead. Okay, if they live, if they die, it'll be like one of the subsidiary indie branches of the studios, and the star of the movie will be a Hollywood actress who makes herself unattractive so she can win an Oscar crying a lot of the mom of one of the kids uh, that dies. That's okay, my there's my prediction. Dan, what, what do you, you like that? Aaron, you like this? I, I support your contention. That's my theory. I but think you're the, pretty accurate there. Either way, McLovin <laughs> gets cast as the coach. McLovin needs a job. He hasn't had a show since yeah, her movie since Yeah, fell out of see pretty fast. No, it's either him. Yeah. Or, it's either him. Has instead the test of time now, has it? Yeah, or the or the guy that uh, is with Stifler's mom in American Pie. Oh, oh, he's cute. Finch. Finch? Finch? Is that his name? No. Sean, Sean something. No, no, that's Stifler. Stifler. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Stiff, the guy that hooks up with Stifler's mom. I remember. I don't remember who. It, I, I know. I, I think they're basically the same person. But or back Urkel, to my Urkel, Urkel, maybe. Yeah, it'll be fine. someone super horrible. Michael Sarah. Yes. Michael Sarah. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm saying that's who I think it would oh, be. Oh no, you're Michael Sarah is the other guy from Superbad. Yeah, you're thinking he Paul Finch, also, Eddie K. Thomas is the Eddie guy. K. Thomas. Yeah, that's, that's right. Michael Sarah was also in. Um, There's no money in the banana stand. Uh, Arrested Development. Right. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes, he is George uh, George Michael. George Michael, correct. That's right. <laughs> so good um but i i go michael Cera might be the coach that's not a bad casting move too. it isn't he, yes no michael, uh, jesse, michael. jesse eisenberg is that his name the guy eisenberg that, eisenberg right um, all good choices i wish we were in casting would be making millions yeah I, if i were to cast the thai movie uh the thai soccer team, whether they win or lose the the casting of the coach is identical here's the question who do you cast as the Thai Navy SEAL? Do they have to be Thai? I was thinking about that. Do they have to be Thai? This is a whole... We, we can do two hours on this issue. Literally. I think it would behoove the said movie studio to make him a Thai American actor or a Thai so actor. So we can do two hours on this issue. Easily. But you know what we will we'll only take five seconds to do? F- famous Thai actors. <laughs> That's going to need our research department, Dan, to Google again. That's a problem. But... I agree. Anyone? So I, I don't. I can't think of any that come to my mind. Yeah, no. I just Google it. I don't even re- recognize any of these names. No, so. so that's the problem, right? Because now, which is worse, right? Which is worse, casting the Navy Seal, casting the Rock as the Navy Seal because he's not Thai, right? Or casting like a Chinese dude. That's almost as worse the, as the Thai. Navy SEAL, which is going to get you, which one is going to get the yellow tape from the PC police more? I, I think you're, 
either way in, in a lot of hot water because I know I have friends that are Asian. So are we still going to do the casting for this movie? No, I changed my mind. I quit. <laughs> that's, that's, I retired. Well, let's let people I don't know. On the in. note of the Chinese actor, I could see Jet Li being a great uh, Navy SEAL to go in there. Yeah, but, he's, but it, the question is, which is more, which is going to be considered more racist? I think that's more racist. It's, it's like you care so little about our Thai culture that you're going to cast someone that's Chinese just because you have poor cross racial identification and think we all look alike. Rather than just, if I just cast The Rock or Mark Wahlberg? None of it's good. <laughs> the optics, as we say, the optics on this are particularly bad. Right, well, Wait, can I tell you another story about optics while yes, we're on optics? Yes. Okay. So we have this movie, and they haven't made a movie about my Chilean miners that I was talking about. That's true. And I don't know why. I thought that was like the hot story. Well, did any of them die? I don't recall, but do you know the story about the one guy that came out, the Lothario down in the mine? So all these wives and spouses and children and families were waiting at the top of the mine for these people to come out. And the one gentleman had both a wife oh, and yeah. a mistress yeah. waiting up there for days. That's awesome. And, and everyone was speculating. I mean, I mean horrible. <laughs> yeah. But everyone was speculating, which one is he going to pick? Who is he going to take? Don't tell us because we'll take a break. And it's the cliffhanger. When we come back, you have to reveal to us did the Chilean miner that came up that had both his wife and his paramour at the top of the ladder of the mine. Which one did he go to? When we come back, Ariel Moore, Anthony Mazzarelli, Talk Radio 1210. W wow, this is impressive. Mazzarelli. We're talking about the Thai soccer team. It's all, for a, a horrible situation, it's all good news so far. Everybody's still alive, all 12 of the players ages 11 to 16 the 25 year old soccer coach four have emerged um already um that rescue will will continue in 10 to 20 hours we're, we're talking about a whole bunch of aspects of it one of them being um this idea that look this thing's going to go hollywood uh, and before the break aaron was saying well first of all we're talking about different aspects of what has happened so far uh they're two and a half miles down uh what has happened and uh a couple of people want to weigh in so let's give them a chance to do so 855-839-1210 855-839-1210 hey jeff in levittown you're on talk radio 1210 yeah hi hi uh you keep talking about them being two and a half miles down, which kind of bothers me because it's, uh, they're actually about uh, three or four kilometers into the cave. Uh, they're about 800 feet below the ground. The cave tr traverses around the uh, the bottom edge of the mountain, uh, I, I believe. I mean, I appreciate his correction and it, it did clarify things. However, to be very honest with you, neither situation sounds very positive. So what is it that happened with the All minor? Right. The minor? So we were talking before the break, we were talking about this thing's going to be a movie. I give you my take on how it ends determines the type of movie. Right. Um, we talked about, you had mentioned the, the miners, the coal miners, and the research department during the break says... Yeah, I'm sorry to re report, but there is a pretty bad movie already made about it called The 33. It came out in 2015. I think it has around a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Ooh. Yeah. So so who was in the movie? Uh, Antonio Banderas was in it. Uh, some other names that I don't recognize, but James Brolin was in the movie. Man, I'm looking at it now. There's some pretty good names. Antonio Banderas. He's mm -hmm. a James Bro Lou Diamond Phillips. Whoa, these are all great actors. Oscar Nunez. You know who that is? The dude from The Office. Yes. I, oh, I know who he is from The Office, and yeah. I haven't even really watched The Office. Office. That guy's funny. This isn't really a. a Who'd Oscar Nunez play? He played Yanni Barrios. Wait, that's my guy. Yes. Yanni Barrios is the guy that while he was down in the mine, it came out that he had a wife and a girlfriend that were both waiting for him at the top. And, and the big question was when he gets out, who is he going to go to? Is it going to be the wife or is it going to be the mistress? And do you know? I do know. So was it the wife or the mistress? It was the mistress. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> it does. But I think the wife, she, from what I've read, is she found this out when he was in there about the mistress. So she went home. She's like, forget about it. I'm going home. I don't have any feelings. I'm over this guy. <laughs> yeah, he can die. So, she, yeah, she was like, forget so this guy. So by process of elimination, it so was she, the mistress. Yeah, so it wasn't like he actually had to walk to the top and say, D devil on one side, angel on the other. But he, so he went with the mistress and apparently he said something pretty colorful. Oh, I'm actually looking at it. This Tell me what he said to said mistress, because it's pretty racy. So this is, this literally, if you put this in the script, this is why the movie is bad. Because the movie probably actually was what he actually said, and you would never believe it. No. This is what he said. 
His first words to her are from emerging. So he emerges, and right. it's his mistress, mistress, not his wife. Now the wife went home. He she says, had... I'm going to take you to bed for a few days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a horror. I mean, if you're going to use that exact script, that's a horrible line. That's what I'm saying. That's why the movie. Uh, forget, like, forget the casting department. Now we're movie. We're, we're now we're screenwriters. How do you fix that and make it even reasonable? I, I actually think our, our question about casting for is, is kind of an interesting race question. Well, this one didn't seem to care. They cost they Lou Diamond Phillips is to the best of my knowledge, not Chilean. Oh, yeah. Well. And Josh Brolin, as handsome as he is, is certainly not Chilean. And Oscar Nunez is Cuban. So they're just going with anyone that has has a Latin sounding name, yeah, or, but that's or a not diamond get, in their name. But that's not going to get the same. Antonio Banderas, he's like actually Spanish. Right, well, that not? answers our question, though. That would mean that, but they they are all Hispanic. Yeah, Lou Diamond Phillips is Filipino. <sighs> well, then then he can. Well, no, I don't know. So in other words, if, when they when they cast the movie. For these, for the soccer team in Thailand, because they're we're all going to live. Let's assume they all live, because yes. it looks like they will. Then it'll be a big budget movie where the star of the movie will be the Navy SEAL people. They're all the main SEALs doing the heavy lift here are all Thai, right? They're from Thailand, right? Do which is will they cast an Asian actor? I think it would behoove them to do so, and I think which would be worse if they cast. A non-Asian actor, or if they cast someone who's not Thai. If if my feet were held to the fire, I would actually say it's worse if they cast just like The Rock, or like an American, or someone Caucasian, or anything. They need to go Asian on this. <laughs> but, but, yeah, all right, be interesting. Because um, famous Thai actors acting... Here's, what, here's how we're going to make our money, Aaron. All right. And put it this way. I looked at famous Thai actors. Right. And here's how we're going to make our money. We're right. going to open an acting school in Thailand. Ah, just for this movie? No, just in general, because there's they don't seem to produce many actors. And it's going to have to be in English, so we're going to have to have someone that can teach them to speak English. Why without... does it have to be in English? Maybe Do you think so... the average moviegoer is going to watch subtitles? If they die, this is going to be an indie little film. Well, they're not going to die. We're putting that out in the universe that everyone's going to live. They're all going to live. Yes, but... And it's got to be a big budget So then we need to, they need no to have, as we say in broadcasting, non-regional diction. <laughs> what? That's the term? Yes. When you don't have a southern accent, you don't have a Russian accent, you don't have any accent, you have non-regional diction. All right, so it needs to be non-regional diction. I got a good guy for the Navy SEAL. Okay. Uh, Tony Ja, who is actually a Thai uh, actor from Thailand, uh, was in X, uh, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage, Never Back Down, No Surrender, and the uh, Fast and Furious 7 movie. And he looks like a SEAL. Okay, let's let, let's uh, what's his name? Tony J-A-A. -A. Tony, Tony Ja. Ja. Let's see, Tony Ja. Oh, I know who that guy is. Let me look him up. Hold on. I know that guy. He's been in, I've seen him in, in, in movies. All right. So, so this is, by the way, this is it. This guy's your only, your only shot. This is your, <laughs> this is it, man. <laughs> he is, uh, he didn't come up under famous Thai actors. He's a Thai martial artist. Better yet. Yeah. Let's look at his, um, IMDB. I, I, I'm on IMDB. And he's only five foot six, so he's uh, diminutive in stature, if you will. Right, so that's why you're saying he fit for the, the role. role. Yeah, because he can fit. That's what I saw him in. I saw him in. Uh, was he in one of the Ip Man's? I've seen those? No, he's in one that hasn't come out yet. So. I've, I've I know you've seen that famous uh, trilogy Ong Bak. That's probably where you saw him as X X X Return. I've, I've heard I of that not, movie at least. I have not. Uh, I'm not up to speed on the Ong Box. <laughs> the coach could come out. How do you make the choice? We want to hear from you. 855-839-1210. 855-839-1210. Elmore. By the way, you can follow Aaron on Twitter at Aaron Elmore. Um, you can also, her Instagram is Aaron M. Elmore. Aaron, how do you, uh, what would you do? What would be your methodology? Personally, I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. There's not, right? I mean, there's, it, no. you would look, and then if you look backwards and you say, oh, I did the wrong thing, it's, you have to go with the information you have at the time, right? Right. And hindsight's always twenty twenty, So we can't really go there. But if it were me and I were tasked with making this daunting decision, 
What I would do is I would make it completely random. So you'd go by lottery. Right, yeah. Which complete. is, I think, what a lot of, what most Be- ethicists would say. Because then these children don't feel they sort of, that, that's sort of how life works, you know? And we're not calling you the strongest or the weakest. We're saying this is how this is going to go. And then the person making the decision isn't really culpable for their decision either. Clever. Very So clever. that way, then no one is on the hook personally. And these children have no head trauma, mental, mentally, so to speak, over this. So it's kind of the only, in my opinion, win-win situation. All right. Interesting. All right. Let's hear what people think. 855-839-1210. 855-839-1210. Hey, Bob in Downingtown. You're on Talk Radio 1210. Bob, how would you choose who to rescue? Well, I think you would rely on the experts from the uh, rescue teams who have probably dealt with these kind of stresses better. My just would be to take the healthiest because you'd say, look, I, I got to see if we can get anybody out, right? Like get anybody out because at any time we might not be able to get anyone else out because I'm looking at it from the lens of how we would do mass triage. Like, again, I'm not the expert in this, but every situation is different. You also have to worry about if they get, if something happens on the way, they get stuck, that they get stuck in there and then they block everyone else. I can see the logic in weakest also, too, because then you don't want to end up not being able to get someone out. So, look, there's lots more to come. we got a lot more we want to talk about. Aaron Elmore is here. Anthony Mazzarelli. It's Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Elmore is here. I'm Anthony Mazzarelli. We're both excited to be with you. Aaron, I do want to ask you, uh, before we talk about the story, ask you a little bit more about yourself. We talked about this. You are you're an attorney. You're a mother of five-year-old Royce, correct? That's right. My pride and joy. Um, your pride and joy. Other than my hubby. Um, you've been married for, how long have you been married for? Oh, you better get this right. <laughs> I pause. think six years. <laughs> five six or six years. But it goes by fast. It's gone by so fast. It's going, it's going by fast. Six years. I've been married six years. Um, and you uh, went to Villanova Law School. I did. That, that's what brought you to Philly initially, right? I came here without knowing of hardly anything at all about Philadelphia other than what I've seen online and read in books. And I went to Villanova Law School and I loved Philadelphia. Grew up in so, Pittsburgh. Yep. Um, and you were uh, a surrogate for the Trump campaign. So you worked on the Trump campaign. I was. I did. Um, and and I was got... a deputy press secretary at the RNC in Cleveland. Oh, I forgot about that part. So deputy yes. press secretary for the RNC in Cleveland. And then, uh, but prior for that, got to know uh, Donald Trump because you were on the third season of The Apprentice. Yes. And I've met all of the children and obviously know the president fairly well. Yeah. So, uh, and you've been doing a ton of, I, look, I've seen you now on uh, a lot of, I've seen you on Fox several times. Yes. I think I saw a couple of CNN. Uh, I I have, well. I've done all of the networks, but I, pre- networks. I predominantly spend my time um, at Fox News. I have a reoccurring hosting on the panel of the Maria Barta Romo show, which is on 6 to 9 a.m. on um, Fox Business Network. Nice. Maria, they call her the money honey. That's what they may call her. Yes. Um, <laughs> that is a good show. It is. Um, I, and she's a nice... I would definitely not call her the money honey, though. I feel a, uncomfortable calling her the money honey. Well, I wouldn't ask you to. You're... you're, <laughs> um, you're but, you're uh, on the straight and narrow over I am there. On the, I am on the straight and narrow. Um, but so, uh, but it's great to have you here tonight. It's been fun the last couple hours. So fun. I'm uh, having the best time, truly. Uh, but now I think there is, and, and there's, look, we have so much more we want to talk about. But this one particular story mm-hmm. is uh, is fascinating. Well, I was going to say, this is the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Does that segue you into what you're going to tell me? I have a feeling. Uh, this is an interesting <laughs> segue. <laughs> Um, and it has to do with Luma dolls. Lumi okay. dolls? Is that how, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's, it's founded in 2017 by a group of Spanish entrepreneurs from Barcelona. Okay. And what it is, is they're opening um, one of these, uh, opening the first Luma dolls venue was just off of this sort of famous area in Barcelona. And now they're about to open their third. And here's what Luma dolls are. They're sex dolls. So well, these are essentially brothels, right? That um, they're brothels with sex robots. And by the way, my next vacation this summer with my husband is to Barcelona. We're going in August. Whose idea was that? You we or have your a, husband? Neither. We have a wedding, so okay. No one. So could have, <laughs> this was not my husband's idea. Okay. 
Um, this is predetermined. This is, pre, this is prior to the opening of where, Luma where Dolls. Where is the Luma Doll? Is it like a storefront? Do you think they have like a storefront? No, or? actually, it's they, they they do this thing now where you have to become, they won't even a tell member. you where they are. Yeah. Um, but this thing is going to grow, right? So sex robots are going to grow. This has actually been known for a while. Sex but, bots. Sex bots. So oh here's my. the question. If... As these things grow, and this is the rapid growth in this business, right? right? If your husband were to go to sex bot, like let's say you go to this this uh, wedding in Spain in uh-huh. a few weeks, and, which, and I have too much sangria and ham croquettes, and I go home early, and he goes off to the yeah, sex or you bot guys store. Have a, d- a couple of days, and he goes off to Lumidals, okay, um, just off Barcelona's famous La Rambla Las Boulevard. Rambla, I, I know exactly where it is. Yeah, so if he says, oh, "I'm going to Lumidals," Las, Rambla. Las Rambla. <laughs> yeah, 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 and he ends up <laughs> for an extra ham croquette. <laughs> yes, and he goes <laughs> to this place. Is that cheating? Okay, well, let's take it out of the context of my husband and myself, but. Do I think oh. it is cheating? But do, I mean, it's just, it makes too oh, yeah. personal. It's too personal. Oh, okay. But, okay, fine. We can, we, we don't have no, to do no, just overall. Okay, is, is it, cheating? it cheating? I do not think it is cheating. A robot does not have a heart, a soul, or skin. However, they probably have a skinnier waistline than I do, but neither here nor there. <laughs> right. The other good thing about these robots, okay, men like to watch certain videos on the computer. I think this is nothing more or less than watching a, a, a a sexual video on the internet. This is a doll. It is not. A, it doesn't even have skin. It's a robot. It's metal. And by the way, this robot's not going to come knocking on your door and telling you they don't have emotion. They're not going to say, "I love your husband." They're not going to come to your house and say the baby's your husband's because it's a robot. They don't get pregnant. I think there's a lot of upside here. All right. So no one's falling in love. They're not going to try to raise my children as their own. All right. So and by the way, no one's getting an STD either. So win, the, win, win, and win. So the Aaron Elmore sort of take on this is. Listen, the sex doll brothel um, is not cheating. It's no, it's not dramatically different than pornography. Correct. Um, and you know, it's it's not that different. No, bro, it, it feels different because it's a brothel. We say the word brothel, so it conjures up images of of a cheat of someone cheating with an actual person. But at the end of the day, it's a device. Correct. And that's like saying, well, for example, talk about a device that some people use devices by themselves. Is that then cheating? Well, this is by yourself, right? Well, you know it's what I'm saying? Some, just, I, I'm trying to say things without saying them. No, but no. I mean, you can, it's, this is clinical. Some, you can be clinical. Some, some women use devices. Yeah, you, they use sex toys. <laughs> yes, thank you. No, I mean, we're, we're having a clinical discussion. <laughs> right, so some women, so, so is, that's not cheating is, now, is this it? This is science. I'm a doctor. Okay, and I have another doctor question for you. Yes. So... When you put a stethoscope made of metal on someone's chest, it's cold. These people say, oh, it's cold. Are these yes. robots kept, kept at room temperature? Are they warm? I mean, I see a <laughs> hunk of junk metal being freezing and cold I don't, and I don't, clinical. I don't know, but presumably if the uh, people who run this industry like were listening to us, they'd now have an idea. Like right? a like, toilet seat. Like, hey, listen, I was listening to Erin Elmore <laughs> the, to- uh, the other night, and she had a really good idea, and like, they, they, they're taking notes. Maybe but- we could all have our sex bot heated to the temperature that we like. Some <laughs> people run hot 98, or cold. 98.6 is uh, probably the... That, that's got to be what they do. <laughs> I, well, I would assume so. I don't know, but I would assume so. Wow. Um, this, but I, this... I want to know what people think. 855-839-1210. 855-839-1210. This is going to, you're going to see this more and more. These are brothel. These are physical locations okay. where where people can go. I guess it doesn't have to be a man, but presumably this, the clientele are mostly going to be men. Uh, yeah, they yes. go in. It's it's a brothel. You go in. You go in to have sex. I'm looking at pictures of what this looks like, and they're they, they look like women, but they're robots. They're sex bots. The men have sex with them. They leave. Is that cheating? I have one question that's a total aside, and I yeah. have to, I can't stop thinking about it. No, go ahead. Do these men have to wear prophylactics? Yes. Ah, thank you, Dan. D- do they? Yeah, I'm very well versed in this world. Oh, Dan, come on. Have now. you been? To, have you, no, have no, you been? I'm, to just, the I'm just kidding. But I, I read an article, and they do have to use it, which would make sense because you can still spread disease. Correct. That's true. Here's the question: Do you? Can you get sex? Can Can you get sex? Can you get <laughs> an STD from a toilet seat? 
No, is the answer. The answer is yes. What? If you have unprotected sex with someone who has a sexually transmitted disease on top of a toilet seat. Oh, okay. So, but like, the, so, so the, the answer is no. Right. Thank you. Right. You just yeah. want to tease me and make me think I'm wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah. because the old school answer you would read is, yes, "Oh, my husband said he got." Gonorrhea from a toilet seat. No, right. no, 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 no. He Your did. husband's. Yeah, he, he did because he had sex with someone who had gonorrhea on top of a toilet, toilet seat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, but look, what, what about what if the doll? If the dolls, so it doesn't matter what the dolls look like. Like, would it bother you? Like, oh, so if I'm a woman and I'm going to a man doll, like you're saying, is he look like George Clooney or something? Correct. Like, like is George Clooney the? Is that the ultimate for you? No, that he is not my get out of jail free card. Oh, you have a hall pass. Like, is that my the husband is probably listening, and we wouldn't call would it a hall know, pass. But does he know like who your hall pass? He is? knows who I find to be a very amorous male. My one, my one, and my friends all know too. I have oh, the one oh, guy. It's that obvious that your friends know. My. It's that obvious. And he's the one guy. And listen, let me say for the record, my husband is 10 times hotter, but you have to have, there's a reality that I love very much, my dearest darling husband. But I have my wait, one wait, wait, guy. Wait, hold on. So if we <laughs> called your friends. I bet, let's make a bet on this. If you call two to three of my girlfriends and ask them who this person is, they'll know. And if I'm wrong, what, what, what's our bet? Uh, well, hold on. Let, let's name the, so we're going to call how many friends? Uh, you can call two or three. All right, we'll call three friends. All right. And if two of the three get it right, you win. What do I win? Or three to the three have to get They're it right. They're all going to get it right. All right, so three to the three have to get it right. Give me the friends' names. Oh, let me pick. Hold on, hold on. Uh, does my sister count? Your sister counts, yeah. All right, we're going to call uh, Ash. I, uh, is she are she doesn't... Friend? Are you friends with your sister? Yeah, she's my then best she friend. she counts. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to call my sister Ashley. Okay. I feel like I'm on, on that, that show where you, like, uh, you're a friend. wants to be a millionaire? Yes, yeah. except for I don't think I'm going to win a million dollars. All right. Uh, you're, you're, you're not. That's not going is, to be the bet. So. Let's call Monique. Okay. And let's call Jamie. All right. Those are the three we'll call. Those so, are my three. These girls better start listening. Better get this right. We'll we have... take a break. And if only two, let's say only two of them pick up. All right. Right. Like however many pick up, that's the bet. And I will relinquish my you phone to you right now you to see that I'm not texting them. You can't. Yes. Put your phone away. And you can't, you can't come back and be like, well, you know, none of them answered. So, or only one of them answered. So, hey, we got to do the other two. No, no. And you're saying it. they all know who your hall pass is. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, this will be interesting. So and Dan, what are we, we got to pick our wagers. What are we wagering? Oh, what are we wagering? If I win, what do you have to do? And if you win, what do you have to do? We, oh. I, I like a friendly wager. All right, when we come back. Oh, we'll how about them, this? I have, I have a wager. We'll have them on the line. And we want, I want people to call in and give us what the wager should be. What's the wager? You, I think that you should have to come to my hairstylist. You're working on being fashionable, yes, right? You're, got, well, I'm taking advantage of your, you're like a, you're into fashion. I'm I taking am. advantage of doing, doing some shows with you. So <laughs> I want like a makeover. So you're, you, I have to surrender so, to the hairstylist. You have to surrender to my hairstylist if I get this right. Done. Done. Oh, that's easy. Done. All right. So then what do, uh, what do you have to do? If I lose? Yeah. Oh gosh. Anything you want. I gotta figure that we gotta figure this out. Like, I think it's like I have to. I get. I can to hold give a you, sign in Rittenhouse Square doing something. I think I, I think I get to like make a T-shirt or something that you have to wear. Send out your in husband public. to Luma Dolls in Barcelona. <laughs> oh, your husband. I think Craig is going to take a hard pass on Lumi Dolls. <laughs> Whoa! I thought it's just, it's it's no. It's just like it's All no right. big deal to you though. <laughs> Oh, there's a little crack in the armor of her argument. Let's take a break. When we come back, Aaron Helmore, Anthony Mazzarelli, oh. Stock Radio 1210. Thousands of lives are devastated. They're going to be everywhere at some point. That's terrifying. It is a little bit terrifying, <laughs> but um, it's now mainly in Europe, started in Barcelona, the Lumidals. You know where this actually started was Austin Powers. Those Austin Powers movies with Mike Myers, right? Yeah, they the were called Fembots. Fembots. Yeah. They had exploding choo -choo -choo That's right. out of their bosom. Yeah, but I, uh, yes, that's, that's, if that's a clinical first, enough word, I hope. That is, that's clinical enough. Okay. Um, I get nervous. With Dan these gave things. a thumbs up with that one. Oh, phew. Um, so the sex bot, so th these are brothels that are filled with robots that you could have sex with. And they're very realistic looking if you look online. Um, you better make sure that you Google carefully um, <laughs> in order to find this. But, um, and when we were having the discussion about this of, is if your significant other goes to a brothel with a sex bot, as these things become more popular, do you consider that cheating? And as we're having the discussion, Aaron said, well, you know, it's not like it, it would, the equivalent for a woman would be if the doll, I said, what if, what if the doll is really attractive? And she said, well, what if it looked like George Clooney? And I said, oh, is that like your big thing? And Aaron said, well... You know, I said, do you have a hall pass sort of thing? She goes, no, everyone knows who my hall pass is. And everybody I said, nobody knows. knows. Every, I so, bet you a thousand bucks. 
And uh, so, go so ahead. oh, we bet a thousand bucks. Oh no, I changed my mind. We already right, bet. So we, we made our wager. We have our wager, and the wager is that her best friends. And she literally named the friends, and we—they're on hold right now. I can't now. believe they all, all are on hold. Yeah, well, and one of these girls is more kind and more beautiful than the next. May I say? They—they, they, well, let's see if they answer it. Or so maybe just, I'm just buttering them up so they can get the answer right. Well, let's see if they get the answer. So if they all—if if all three of them can name who Erin's hall pass would be, <laughs> then uh, then she wins, which means I have to go get my haircut with right. her stylist. That's right. If she wins. If I win, meaning any of them are wrong. Yes, any of them. Any of them. Now, here's the problem. I need to have a 100% success ratio or I lose. Yeah, but here's the problem. You have to get the names right now, Dan, and put the names up. Because the moment the first one says it, if we say right or wrong, all three of them have to say the same name. Oh, so how are we going to do this? Oh, yeah, you're you, the know, radio you, didn't think, you didn't think I thought about this, huh? Oh, oh mm, uh, Maz mm, knows yeah, what he's doing. Yeah, okay, yeah. so what is he going to do? I'm an uber competitive person, right? So Dan is going to pick up each line and ask them to give the name, and then he's going to write the name down. But are we going to get to hear him say it on the air? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to come to them. But we're okay. Gonna, okay, okay, okay. All right, uh, but we're going to know whether they're right or wrong ahead of time, Right. All right, so two of them have already said the same name. I'm not going to give any sort of facial expression. All right, so let's see if they got it right. All right. All right, but we're going to make this a little more interesting because, and I'll give I'll give Jamie, Monique, and Ashley the heads up. Um, oh, they did all say the same name. You know what the, the funniest name. part of this is? Yeah. They, they all even... said the exact same phrase, too. They added a little uh, end to it saying 100%. Because I'm psychotic obsessed. It's like a... All right. Let's, let's talk to them and see if they have to say yeah, it. Well, You'll get... be able to see their veracity and honesty when you well, hear Jane, them. Well, Jamie, Monique, and Ashley, just so you know, to give you the heads up, I'm going to ask you who yours is. Oh, girls. So, I just hope they're listening and paying attention. Hey, Jamie, welcome to 1210. Hello, how are you? Hey, Jamie. So who is Erin Elmore's hall pass? Oh, my goodness. John Stamos. Hands <laughs> down. <laughs> is that correct? Goes by that she does not bring up that name. Is so, that right? He's an attractive fella, okay? That's no. all I have to say about that. Didn't he have a catchphrase? I don't... He uh, did. Uncle Jesse. I don't... What yeah. was it? What was this? Oh, God. He I, had a catchphrase. I love you, Erin. It wasn't <laughs> I love you, Erin. Oh, it was something like, have mercy. Mercy. Have yeah. mercy. Yeah, that's it, I think. Um, the day that he got married and that his wife was pregnant, people were, like, sending me condolences. Rebecca Romaine Stamos? That was the first but now, way. But now he's, now he's remarried, pre- right? Yeah, very young. What, has the same age difference as my husband and I, and she's a young, beautiful woman. But didn't you have to ask Jamie a question? Jamie, who would who is your hall pass? If you were married and, you know, hypothetically. Yes. Oh, this is tough. Um... I was a big Tom Cruise fan for a while. So either Tom Cruise or Matt Damon. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. but you, so <laughs> when you, if you get married, this is who you get a pass and it's going to be, it would be Matt, it would be Tom Cruise or Matt Damon. Yes. All right, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> and my All other right. two girlfriends are married. So they're going to have real hall. They're going to have thought about this long they're and hard. Have to, Monique, you did. Yeah, you, you said John Stamos, right? I did. I did. I spent. I went to uh, Disney World with my family for last year for spring break, and he happened to be there. And I spent like the entire day trying to stalk him down just for Aaron. I was and like, I was, you like, need oh, to find God. him now. Yeah, no idea who's here. <laughs> she was like, oh. I was like, don't worry, I'll tell him that you are his future wife. But then I, you know, felt bad. So you her. didn't hesitate for a moment. This really was no, easy. No. Oh my God, I've known Aaron for over a decade. Like this, yeah. is, this is our life. And Monique just got married in a very beautiful wedding a week ago herself. So despite her wedding and how beautiful it was. It was amazing. Who is the hall pass for Monique? I don't know if I can say the same thing. She's going to have to tell us because I don't think she, well, we're going to have to let her answer that one. So my hall pass is Thor. But it's oh. not like Chris Hemsworth. I, it's like Thor, the actual God of Thunder, but I always tell Mark. <laughs> right, so, not, so Chris Hemsworth, no, but if he was in the Thor character, it's a hall pass. Yes. All right, there you go. It's <laughs> right. a good one, Monique. Thank you. All right, now My this sister. is your sister. All right, Ashley, was, how long did it take for you to come up with John Stamos? Oh, my God, instant. It was like a no-brainer. That was easy. <laughs> Easiest question you've been asked all year. Easiest question I've ever answered in my entire life. <sighs> All right. That's well, well, you're married. Who's your hall whoa, pass? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before wait, you wait, say wait, it, wait. don't say it. Don't let's say see, it. Let's see if Aaron can guess. 
We have very different taste in men. All right, well, then it's not John Stamos. But I will tell Wait, you. Wait, is it Dave Couillet? Oh, my God, that would be so funny. Oh my God, I will tell you amazing. this. You know, this is. Path. He, like, pulled that out of my brain. <laughs> She, you know, uh, you know who did hit on her, but this is an aside, and we'll talk about it later. Yes, is uh, Uncle Jack? No, the other one, Mike. Uh, Mike from the Jersey Shore. What's the his situation? Name? The situation. Hit on my sister. <laughs> he lives in her town. Your sister hooked up with the situation. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not take this no, to the next no, level. No. He hit on her, but did Ashley, did Ashley hook up with the situation before she started dating her husband? <laughs> Yeah, she dated the situation before she met her husband. She was married to the situation before met her husband. At any rate. All right, so, so who's your hall pass? Well, so I was panicking when you said that, and I said to my husband, oh, my God, he's my hall pass. And he said, baby, your hall pass could be Megan Fox. And I said, that's not fair. That's his hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, like, two birds with one stuff. But, you don't, yeah, so, you, but here's the thing, Ashley. Do you really need a hall pass? Because you've already hooked up with Mike the Situation. <laughs> Right, I feel like I've reached the pinnacle, and I can only go down from here. That's true. So. That's true. By the way, that saying that means you're pretty much admitting you hooked up with Mike. The situation. No, We're, I did not. Yes, no, we are breaking did. news right here. <laughs> you did. Listen, it's a good segue because later in the show, when we come back, I, this is no joke. We were going to talk about how Jersey Shore is now coming to a South Jersey Shore town. So why don't you run over to his apartment complex, knock on his door, get him on the phone, and say your ex-girlfriend's here, and we need to talk to him about oh, the show. Oh, do you think he still, does he still have your number? No, he doesn't even know who I am. No, he doesn't. Come on. He's, that's unfair. He'll remember. Even if no, it was only one time, he'll remember. His Ferrari was out, and I rolled my eyes, and I said, oh, please. I said, that looks like a Hyundai to me, and that was the extent of our conversation. It ends there. So you guys hooked up one time and you had so little conversation. You still hooked up? In the Hondai. In the Hondai they hooked up. (laughs) All right, Ashley. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. (laughs) So thanks, guys. Thank you. The bigger story is that I win. You do. So I'm not going to have to get like a a, a faux hawk or anything crazy, right? I would never do that to you. You're you're a respectable man. I think we just take a little off the side. I need something cooler, though. Grow it out a little bit. And maybe by next week, it'll be long and and we'll make you... You look great already. You're really working on your fashion game. I think the last thing you need to do to complete the look is that hair and you're going to be... All right. Ready for The Bachelor. I like it. Hey, hand to the Bible. I have a friend who's my age. I'm 28. And she is obsessed with Ted Danson. He's sexy too. Yeah, my really like so. Uh, yeah, he's a silver fox. Little cheers, Ted Danson was okay, but she's talking like. I mean, Cheers, Ted Danson was Ted basically Danson. like you could totally see him being uh, somebody's hall pass. Yeah, but now a twenty-eight-year-old looking at the guy with the white hair and the glasses. He's sexy. You think for so? twenty-eight, it's a little daddy issue. Yeah, uh, you might be right there. That's kind of interesting for because twenty-eight, that is a pretty. So big how gap. old is he? Like that's like sixty some. That's a weird age gap. Like that's forty years. If my math serves me well. <laughs> my how book. old is Ted Danson? He is getting up there. He's 70. Uh, yeah, she's got daddy issues. She needs to go to therapy. <laughs> um, you know what, Dan? You could have her call in and we could discuss that with her. Oh, I'll text her. I'll shoot her text. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty big age gap. But let's hear Sean wants to weigh in. Then we'll, we got to take a break. Hey, Sean in Ben Salem, you're, you're on Talk Radio 1210. I'm holding on. I want to say I'm an avid listener. It's nice to not be hearing about politics for once. Hey, hey man, we took a little break. We did. Great job here. Hey, we did, we did two hours of politics. So it's, it's okay to do something uh, a little different. It's nice to get into something different. Thanks. But I'm, uh, I wanted to chime in here. I'm 50 years old, twice divorced, once widowed. And I would oh. absolutely, the, the dating scene at 50 years old is horrendous. I would absolutely love to have a sex spot. Yes. All of the drama that comes with women and the baggage, and you think one of these bots well, won't only, give you any grief. And you know, I, I understand that. I got my baggage. I got kids that are grown, and, you know, I'm past that. You know, I'm ready to start living again. My kids are grown. I'm all right. I'm ready to go. And it's not cheating. That's true. Um, it, it, well, it's not cheating. It is, it, there's something about it that's so icky. Uh, partly because even take the sex bot aspect. Like it's not, it's in a public place. It's not even like it's your own toy of some type. Gently used. It, it's a lease. And like how how often do people like no one washes. A rental car. No. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's like God. sleeping on dirty sheets. Oh, of somebody oh, else. Jeez, that they had sex in. Oh, gross. It sounds unsanitary. To but me. these things are going to arise. Particularly the the sex bots are going to really. This is the any Wait. technology, by the way, always migrates towards pornography. Any really? But look, 
you don't remember this? Ask any guy in this place what they learned how to do with a calculator five minutes after putting their first calculator Six, in Six, nine, hand. two, 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 finds one times eight. It just says boobs. Boobless. That's the one I, that's the mess. Six, yeah. whatever I just said. Well, you may be boobless. The guys is just <laughs> boobs. Right? That's like, boobies. Yeah, right. See? Well, we all have the I variation mean, any on Any technology thing. is... Turns to... Turns to sex. pornography. Yeah, I mean, that's just... The internet. So I mean, only there, that, that musical Avenue Q. There's a whole song in there. The internet is for porn. Is that really? The, is that the tune? Because yeah. I feel like I'm actually at the show. No, that was, that was like, great. That was really. Good. Yeah, I, I have a second career as a Broadway singer. <laughs> That's good. Maybe in Fox News the musical, but um, <laughs> at any rate, a whole other story for another day. <laughs> yeah. But a great musical. Well, Howard Stern, who we're a huge fan of, Anthony and I, uh, said he wants to put that musical on. At any rate, that's neither here nor there. But then we got into conversation about if I said if one of these dolls looked like George Clooney, maybe I'd be in because he's a sexy man. And then Anthony thought that could be my hall pass. Are you calling me Anthony? Never I'm sorry. Anthony. <laughs> you can call me Anthony. I don't care. My mom calls mother? me Anthony. Yeah. Anyway, Anthony. But then I we found out that who was my hall pass? No one other than John Stamos. And now you lost that bet, so you have to get a haircut at my fancy hair salon. Yes. But I didn't ask you who your hall pass is. But I have a whole theory on this. Okay. Has to be who my whole best is. So like you're like the reasonably prudent person, as we say in the law. Okay. You're like a stand up guy. You're reasonable. You hold the door for a woman. You'd give her a coat if she were cold. Mm, thin slice. You're really interesting. No, okay. I like to call compliments. I'm not oh, like yeah. saying you're no, a jerk no, that very, would steal my money no, at a casino. I, I appreciate it. No, I'm sorry. Um, you wouldn't like someone that was too young because you would think that was creepy. You want someone age appropriate. And you want someone that's like not like out like swinging from the rafters doing freaky stuff. You'd want someone that's like kind of motherly and you know womanly, but not too promiscuous if that's a word, which it's not. So I have four choices for you that are like okay. kind of those all American women, not girls because they're women, like a Cindy Crawford mm. or a Cheryl Crow or even a Christy Brinkley, and rounding it off with a. Jennifer Garner. Am I right or am I wrong? You're wrong. Oh, man. Um, all great choices, all wonderful women. Yes. I'm sure I'll have great personalities. Seems that way. Um, gorgeous, too. Gorgeous. Uh, no, the answer is that I'm happily married. I don't have a hall pass. I would well, never do any of that. I'm, I'm just so kidding. boring. Just, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Just wah, kidding. Wah. All right, no, here's We're the thing. We're all playing along here. Here's the, no, here's the thing. The weirdest thing happened with my, I, I have obscure, remember, I'm a huge movie fan. So right. the people that like I like are going to be not uber famous, kind of. But here's the trivia pathway to get to my hall pass. <laughs> he's not, not going to make it easy for us. I'm right. not. I'm not. We're going to have to get into the next issue and see if anyone can wait and get in. Here's what All it right. is the Give us person some clues. that for years was my hall pass is an actress okay. who recently starred in a movie where my newest favorite actress then played her daughter. So it... Okay, I'm trying, I'm trying to daughter, think. Mother, daughter. Mother, daughter. J-Lo? I don't know. No, I was thinking... Can never I take a guess at this? Yeah. Yes, please. I need your help. Allison Janney from I, Tanya. Uh, no, that's a good. Wow, that was epically that's a good, good. It's a really good one because the because I what's her name is super gorgeous. Uh, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, who is close to being on the list. My dilemma is that my my old hall pass was much older than me. Okay. Not much older. It's a few years older than me, and my new one's a few years younger. But still, so what? Wait, the, so Margot well, Robbie's great because she's like, but uh, can I can I take another guess? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Lori Metcalf and Lady Bird. Uh, well, no, the Lady Bird star is way too young. Okay. Um, but, and who would have Laurie Metcalf? As their, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't even really like, know who that is. So she's the the the, the sister from Roseanne. Oh. Okay. Definitely an odd guess, yes. But and Allison Janney is, is like... Allison Janney was... She's cool enough. They kind of look alike, But though. not enough to be a hall pass, guys. Come on. All right, who's hot? And wait, so the one played the other one's mother? Yeah, which is kind of weird, right? I'm thinking like Jane Fonda. I would have thought they were too close in age, but they're not. Um, so is Jane Fonda the original one? No, how old do you think I am? You're my age, basically, but I... <laughs> Jane oh my Fonda's God, a hot Jane lady. Fonda? My husband loves Jane Fonda. But, like, your hall passes were, like... Oh my, she, it's no. not... She's a hot lady. 
She's hot. Jazzercise. How old is Jane Fonda? She's 70. Like Who cares? She's 70. I don't know exactly how old she is, but she's a sexy lady. You know, how the, you know what a hall pass is? Do we have to redefine this? Some people are into all kinds of things. I don't know. All right. So give me more clues. This is too hard. All right. I'll, the husband oh my. in the movie. So this movie came out. Uh, the movie that I'm talking about with the mother, the mother daughter came out, I think just last year. <sighs> came out, no, in 2015. And The Rock was the star. Help me. I've seen like three movies in the last 15 years. I'll let Dan leave it and let's move on to the next issue. All righty, let's do it. Can I get mine? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. She's beautiful. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, that's good. She's like... You changing yours now? No, but that's close. That is really close. She is something. Ooh, what about Cher? Cher's good, but she's also like 90. I mean, do you know... Like, Seriously? She's like literally 100 years old. You know what they say about the By end the way, of- is Cher still alive? <laughs> yes, you know what Can they I say about Cher- the end of the was universe? Was she in the, in the in memoriam in the Oscar last <laughs> year? No. They say about the end of the universe, there's going to be two things left. Cockroaches and Cher. And Cher? So Cher is alive. Yes, she's right. always alive. <laughs> I still All need right. more clues. Or one- okay, so we're going to get in the next topic, and someone's going to try to guess and call in and help me. Yeah, Dan, I have one more gonna- guess? Yes. yes, please, Dan. You're the Carla Gugino. That's correct. What? Oh, hey. How did you even know who that was? That Rock never was in a movie that. called San Andreas back in 2015. And who's the daughter? Uh, Alexandra Daddario. Daddario. Do you know who that is? I don't know who, excuse me, I don't know who either of them are. So you know who both of these actresses are? You've seen Can them Can you like flash a, a picture for me? I so. know Carla from the Spy Kids. I don't know what that, what, that Carla, was a movie when I was a kid that was really big and she was the, I think the mother Carla of the Spy Gugino? Kids. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Yeah. You know her. She was in, um... She was just in a Netflix movie that was pretty popular too. But um and the daughter, Alex Daddario, is in like everything now. Um Baywatch. Have you seen the new Baywatch? No. But you know why you like her? Because she's kind of obscure and you feel like you actually have a chance. <laughs> no, I have no chance. You're like, I actually people. have a chance with this chick. No, and I'm... I actually think you could. If you met her, there's a chance you'd be like this guy is really funny. He's got this cute little innocent looking face. Maybe I'll give him a shot at the title. <laughs> Not, you know, know what Alexander Daddario was actually in? The movie Hall Pass. Oh my. The irony. It all wraps around. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Watchmen? Carla Giugino was no. in that. I, don't, I haven't seen that many movies. I, that, that's unbelievable. I have to watch all of the kids' movies. I have a five-year-old. I mean, so, I've yeah, seen Rio. I've seen Coco. Have I've you seen s- Percy Jackson? Is that movies? a kid's movie? Yeah. For like, like I, we're still an animated only. Yeah, that's true. I don't know that Percy. I haven't even heard of Percy Jackson. I, you know, this is horrible. Yeah, the struggle is real, you my really friend. Need to. <laughs> the struggle is real. All right. So anyway, speaking of, I mean, it was it was your sister. My sister Ashley was on the phone, and your sister, who the claim to fame is that she spent, you know, she had a one night stand with Mike. The situation. <laughs> oh my god, this story is becoming the biggest fish. That, she caught a minnow, and we've now caught Jaws. <laughs> Yeah. So she was hit on by Mike the Situation. So they live in the up, same town. She's hooked up with Mike the Situation, which is pretty cool, all right? Or is it? Or is it? So we got to take a break. When we come back, essentially, let's break it down. Here's the deal. Jersey Shore is back. The TV show Jersey Shore is back. Back and better than ever. And it's it's coming to South Jersey. Yes. And so here's the thing. People in Wildwood, which is where it's coming, are not happy about it. And do you feel that Jersey Shore coming to South Jersey is going to cast a bad light on this region. Because now, it was always North Jersey before. People even in this area would kind of complain about it. But now, do you feel that the sort of Philly, Jersey, Delaware Valley has to be concerned because the, the, the TV show Jersey Shore is coming to our region? Do you, do you have a concern about that? 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. I do not. I'm glad it's coming. And I'll tell you why when we get back. Aaron Elmore, Anthony Mazzarelli. It's Talk Radio 1210. W- you can't serve the financial needs of five generations of business customers without developing an understanding of what those needs are. At Univest, it comes from a willingness to listen and our local values. It's who we are and who will be for you, too. Whether it's loans for expansion, insurance plans to protect your employees, or creating an effective retirement plan, get advice from a financial partner you trust. Univest Banking Insurance and Investments. Financial solutions for your business. Last season, fans took over opposing team stadiums. And listen at this crowd out here on the West Coast. Now, follow 
following the NFL champions on the road will be even easier. It's the Sports Radio 94 WIP Road Game Takeover with fans of Philly. Go to 94WIP.com slash road trip on sale now. Book your trips to watch the birds in New Orleans, Tampa, and Nashville. 94WIP.com slash road trip. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Wow, this is impressive. Hi, it's Chris Stigall. I hope by now you've heard me talk about my dentist and my personal friend Bob Spinato out there at Williamsburg Dental. This is his fifth straight recognition in Mainline Today magazine as top cosmetic dentist in our region. We're talking about other cosmetic dentists naming Dr. Spinato as a top cosmetic dentist in our region. I've known it for years. Is coming the TV show Jersey Shore. <laughs> It's coming, it's coming back. If you remember, that's the show with, um, who are all the Mike players? Mike the Situation. Yeah, that's the one that dated Snooki. your sister. Oh, my gosh. Um, Snooki. Polly D. Polly D. Polly D. My Jen. favorite, Jay Wow. Jay Wow. Uh, um, who are missing? The Keto Guido, they call him. Who's the Keto Guido? We have Ronnie Magro, who's the one that lives in Vegas that's all, Ronnie. Uh, that's all beefed up. Keto uh, Guido was uh, Polly D, wasn't it? No, 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 no. The Keto Guido is Vinny because uh, he's on the ketogenic diet. They just had a season um, that came back after the Jersey Shore that was down in Miami, and um, that was I thought that was really good. Did you catch any of that? I didn't. So, you know, that's different now. Because they're different. They're older. Yes. Yeah, I, my take on this is that the Wildwood should absolutely completely embrace these guys. Without a doubt. I, I don't understand, you know, the, the snobbiness of not wanting them because of whatever they were. That, just take it in and embrace it. First of all, you want the tax dollars, right? And I'm not talking about the Snooky Law. We're not getting into that whole thing now. But take the tax dollars. Take it. It will bring in revenue. Tourist dollars, and then Take real estate it. values go up. Of course. It's a win, win, win. It's so ridiculous to get snobby about the content of the show. And it's a di- they're older. They have, they're like married. They have kids. They're not, they're, it's not the same thing it used to be. Well, they're not the same people that they used to be. But they, even if it was. Right. How bad is they, it? No. Do they think that's not happening in Wildwood? Have you, do they not, who do they, not, do they know who they, do they know who they are as a town? Perhaps there's a little uh, identity issue going on. Well, here's what they said. So the Greater Wildwoods Tourism Improvement and Development Authority issued the following statement on Friday. Would you like me to read it? I would like that very much. Well, the Wildwoods, New Jersey, embraces the opportunity to provide a beautiful seaside beach and boardwalk location for filmmakers, TV shows, and social media to film here. It does not welcome the message that the MTV show Jersey Shore presents to its viewers. The Wildwoods family-friendly atmosphere, beautiful award-winning beaches, boardwalk fun, and doo-wop ambiance does not align with the show's overall theme and message. Our resort destination is geared towards good, clean fun for families and multi-generational vacationers who enjoy our beaches, boardwalk, and one-of-a-kind attractions. You, you had me at doo-wop. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do- I laughed out oh, loud see, at but that. You don't, but see, you're not. You don't I'm go not to from the, Philly. So the doo-wop ambiance is. Is that a real thing? It's a real thing. It's a total. Can you like. Please you, explain this to Well, me. so if you play like Wildwood Days, right? Like there's some. There is a, um, the doo-wop sort of culture was a big thing. So I'm a Wildwood guy. Okay. Right? My family has been going to Wildwood every year since my mom was little. Okay. We still go to Wildwood every summer. We, do, we go to North Wildwood now. Right. Not Wildwood. Yep. Um, but like, <laughs> like you will hear this song 800 times. By the way, the other thing, that if these guys are going to work on the boardwalk like they did in the original show... Watch the tram car, please, is going to be heard a million times, which is, I'm sure, a sound bite that you will hear as well. It's not just the music, too. If you go around, there's diners with just big neon signs. It looks like a 50s kind of environment. I was going to say, so it's like a 1950s vibe. It's a whole 50s vibe. They have hotels that were actually redone. To look like the 50s. To look like the 50s, right? I think that's cool. Yes. Yes. That's like part of their... But, so why are they so mad? Well, these people are going to bring in tourism dollars that are going to oh, generate Here's revenue. the big line. Sorry, I got so caught up in doo-wop. I the couldn't. Greater Wildwoods Tourism Improvement and Development Authority, on behalf of the island's three municipal governments, 
So they're not just Wildwood, it's also North Wildwood and Wildwood Crest. The Greater Wildwood Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Wildwood Hotel Motel Association, the Wildwood Downtown Business Improvement District, and the Boardwalk Special Improvement District are united in their opposition of the filming of MTV's The Jersey Shore in the Wildwoods. So you want to know my guess? Yeah. My guess is they're not really opposed. They put this out to make the citizens happy, and they definitely are happy that it's filming there. But then why couldn't they say, although it's regrettable that we're bringing this element here, the citizens should see a silver lining in the fact that there will be greater recognition of the Because they don't want to get voted out. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have to they, they have to say like, oh yeah, we're we're, we're really so, we're really against it. Stop it. Stop it. You right. know, like and but, it's gonna be helpful to them. People are going to say People are going to be in the surrounding towns and say, let's go over and walk through. The, every other store sells T-shirts. Let's go to the t Because these guys always work in a T-shirt store, right? Like, let's go look at the T-shirt store where Pauly D is. Let's go to the restaurant where Jay Wow just was. Let's go to the... It's, it's going to be good for Wildwood. Right. It's going to be good for Wildwood. Do they not think that college kids rent... Who, who by the way, is not even who they are anymore. No. Rent play, it, this is so ridiculous and sort of like i get that maybe towns like north wildwood wildwood crest are trying to sort of break away and do things but wildwood is so wildwood, wildwood goes it's on. wildwood this is, this is what happens in wildwood this is what happens in wildwood and by the way Polly d is now a grown-up you know with a child and he's a world famous dj he's got he's very 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 wealthy these people have all grown up and taken ownership for their prior bad acts and are sort of adults now I, I, snooki has two children i think jay well has two children they are responsible mothers. Do they? I mean, on the show, they they go out. Even on the they do a, the show in Miami. I think it's called the reunion, the family reunion. Yeah, was it good? I thought it was great entertainment, and they don't really do anything that bad. But even on the original show, they weren't that bad. Yeah, it's not like they were injecting heroin. They did what kids do that age. Now their their mannerisms, the way they talk, the was was so local. By the way, I used to. It used to frustrate me, fully admit this, it used to frustrate me because I used to say, look, it should be called North Jersey Shore because they all had accents and they all talk like they were from Staten, because they were Staten from Island. Staten Island and from Long Island. So nothing about them was sat, was was Jersey Shore. It was all North, North Jersey or, or New York, right? But now, look, if they're coming down to the Wildwoods, just welcome them with open arms. Why would you... Right, like and it's I, the market. I now want to go to Wildwood for the, the Jew up, and I want to see Polly. The, the market has has this is where they landed, so embrace it. Right, uh, if you, yes. The Wildwoods will economically benefit. No one's going to not vacation in Wildwood because Jersey Shore is filmed there. Know who you are. I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't know. People can disagree. There was a great tweet uh, that was sent in. Kelly Quack Quack on Twitter says, Oh my God, Jersey Shore is filming in Wildwood. Can't wait to hear Pauly D yell, Yo, Tram Cause are here. Yeah. I, I <laughs> agree. Tram Cause are here. These guys, if they were smart, they would totally embrace it. They would, th these guys, they would embrace them completely. I think that, that's the way to do it. I completely agree. Listen. Aaron, this was a lot of fun tonight. It's over already? It's over. Well, but, we'll be back again soon, won't yes, we? Yes, so we'll be back in two weeks. So July 22nd, we'll be back. With your new haircut. That's a Jersey Shore reference. Uh, that's my true. new haircut. Uh, my new haircut. Um, my one wish before we end. Uh, well, first of all, we obviously want to thank everybody, uh, particularly Ashley, Monique, and Jamie for yes. answering the phone when we called. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping... Your sister will introduce me to Mike the Situation. He was one of my favorite characters on the show. Lots more that we will get to on July 22nd because there's so many great things to talk about in the news. So fun. Dan, you were great. Thank, Thank you, you so Dan. much. Thank you, you too. You're we great. We had a great time. Keep listening to Talk Radio 1210 WPHD.